The smartest way to diet to get lean as effectively and efficiently as possible revolves around the following. Modifying behaviors, not following rules or a list of things to do. If you work with your behaviors, your odds of long-term success go through the roof. If you simply follow a list of rules, your odds of success are almost zero. It's all about how you view yourself, your relationship to food, and why your behaviors are the way they are. We're gonna talk a little bit about that because that's the way to do this. You guys know anybody who's doing this well? Like in the fitness space, is there a, a company or a chain or anybody that's like, we've known this for a while, right? We've talked about this yeah. all the time on the show uh, that, you know, there was a, a period of time when we were all trainers and we used to uh, just write out meal plans and just follow this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. This is to get from point A to point B and even, and had some success, right? Cause like there's some people that are disciplined and will follow exactly what you say. And, but long-term success, those people always ended up coming back or put the weight back yes. on and, it wasn't until later in all of our careers did we start to piece together that, man, so much more uh, should be focused on the behavioral change and, and that over this great program or this great diet to follow. Is there anybody you know that's that's shifted like their, their, the way they structure their program? I don't feel like I've met anybody. I just know coaches and trainers, but yeah, I don't individuals, know individuals. Not like, a, yeah, they have like some formula and some business that's like centered around that. Yeah. I find that interesting, right? Because I think that- I think it's harder to sell. Yeah. I feel like it's almost harder to sell, right? Because it's like, it's easier to sell a formula than it would be to sell like, here's- you're going to have to work through this and it's different for everybody. How right. would you sell that? Right. Yeah. It's more you like know? products you're selling as opposed to the service of yeah. like, yeah, we're going to get to the bottom of this. I, I mean, that to has even, to be why, right? Because I yes. think any, any good coach or trainer worth their salt, once you've been doing this at least 10 or more years, you figure this out. Oh, hundred yep. percent. I mean, if, if they you, all do, yeah. If you, if you stayed in it for 10 or more years and you've trained that many people enough and you to, really care about helping people, yeah, you, you come to the same realization we all did. All three of us came to the same realization. Uh oh, I'm not helping anybody. Yeah. Everybody seems to be failing after a certain period of time. I got to change my approach to give an example, by the way, cause I could, I could say, okay, change your behaviors. That sounds nice. And there, people might be like, well, okay, thanks. Where do I begin? Great. What does that look like? <laughs> First, understand human behavior. So I'll give a simple example, okay? Um, human behavior. Humans don't like to be told not to do things. We don't mind being told to add things to our diet as much. Uh, for example, if I tell you to eat more of something, that's less likely to be a challenge than if I tell you to don't eat these other things over here, yeah. right? So an example of how we would work with your behavior would be, um, hey, eat whatever you want. But make sure you hit your protein targets first and eat it from whole natural foods. And so people hear that and they go, wow, I can eat as much as I want. I just got to hit my protein first. I think I can work with that. Now, we understand that when you do that, it can, it can your satiety goes up. You, you end up eating less calories overall. That's what protein does. You build more muscle in combination with strength training. So the metabolism speeds up and you just get better results. And it's easier to stick to because... The person isn't thinking, I can't. They're thinking, okay, let me just add more of this other thing into my diet. And another silly example, uh, I would tell clients, um, don't change anything, but I don't want you to eat in front of your phone or a computer or the TV. You have to be just with your food present when you eat and then don't change anything else. That would give me the same results. That would, re that would typically reduce their calories by about 10 to 15%, which by the way, the data supports this. Data shows that when people don't eat distracted, they eat about 10% to 15% less calories. So I could either A, tell somebody, let's take your calories down 10 or 15%, or I could say, eat as much as you want, just don't eat in front of the TV or your phone. Which one do you think is more likely to work with human behavior? That's kind of what we're talking about yeah. uh, in, in essence. Yeah, yeah. So when you understand that about yourself, here's another example. If you understand yourself, and you know that there are certain foods that are loosely, we'll loosely label them as trigger foods. Like for me, if there's potato chips anywhere in the vicinity, vicinity, it's very hard for me to, to not overeat. It's just potato chips do, do that for me. So I just don't buy potato chips, but I also don't tell myself I can't eat them. I say, if I want them, then I'll drive myself to the grocery store and I'll buy a single serving. And, and it's just knowing myself. It's knowing my behaviors. It's understanding, um, you know, how I, uh, how I react to certain things. Working with that is a far better approach. Now, does it take more work? 
I guess if you calculate it, uh, work as things you need to focus on initially, but it's actually less work it's overall. It's easier. Yes. It's, it's easier, easier to go there. Right? You know, um, what do you guys think? What, what, how would you guys rank this for coaches and trainers? I, behavioral psychology, the value of them reading and learning. So valuable. Oh, yeah. So valuable. Maybe, huge, maybe, huge maybe, the, maybe the most, right? I mean, I think that what I, what I liked so much about it too was, um, the deeper you go and the more you read uh, in regards to behavioral psychology, the more you realize that, I mean, obviously we're, we're talking about it in the context of coaching a client, right? but there's, it's behavioral psychology. So it, it well, overlaps so many other aspects of your life. Like for example, I was just doing an interview with Mike Matthews, him and I were talking and uh, you know, we were talking about the, the old adage, uh, you know, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. True. Right. And so he was kind of asking me, like, you know, people say that all the time, but then, uh, you know, you have friends that you grow up with since you were kids and you have all this loyalty to them and, you know, and you recognize that, okay, this, my circle of friends are bringing me down, but I also have this bond and connection since childhood with them. How do I break up with them and, and then change my circle or enhance my circle? And it, it actually follows the same you know, behavioral psychology rules that we apply with nutrition. I tell him, I said, you know, I don't, you don't go have a, a sit down conversation. And you have this awkward breakup with a friend. Instead, you go after a relationship that you want to pursue. You fill and, up your time with and you fill up your time with these people that are going to better you as a person. And naturally that falls off. And there's not this awkward, oh, I have to do this. I have to get rid of it. Or I'm in this weird, it's like, it's like prioritizing protein. Yes. It's exact. <laughs> it's ex that's the analogy that I gave. Yeah. And so, and all that stems from understanding behavioral psychology and humans and going, oh, okay. If that works there. And so I think that was one of the coolest parts of learning that was, okay, this, this definitely made me a much better coach. And then also seeing all the parallels in relationships with your, your spouse and with your children and with so much of that I, is factored. I in. remember reading stu a study that showed that uh, people who went to therapy who were obese had a higher success rate of weight loss than people who just went on a diet. And I remember, you know, like these are therapists. They're not, they're not, not nutritionists. fitness coaches. Yeah, they're not nutritionists. No, they're just working on their relationships to themselves and their That's bodies right. and their anxiety and depression. And they had a better success rate than a coach who understands diet, nutrition, and exercise. I remember reading that and going, oh, yeah, it makes perfect sense. I mean, humans, to some extent, are logical, but we're also completely illogical. We, a lot of the decisions we make are, are, if you were to analyze your life, you would look at things and you go, okay, I, I don't know why I do that. shouldn't do that. should definitely not be over here. Why did I make that decision? Why do I continue this thing? I know it's unhealthy for me. I know it's, if I were to construct my life in a logical, perfect way, it would look very different than the way I'm living. So why am I living this way? Well, it's because we're, we're emotional creatures, emotional, well, we're complex, we're seeking control Reactive. too. Yes. I mean, honestly, like we're, we're trying to simplify everything. Like there's so many variables uh, to encounter in, in the journey. And it's like, we don't, we don't want to like constantly interface with that. We want to simplify it like it's an on-off switch like this is like the destination i'm going to get to this place by doing xyz and like you have this idea of like and this expectation of what it's going to take to get there and all these things are going to happen all these dominoes you're uh -huh. setting up it's going to fall instead of literally ebb and flow and and you know having a plan but you're literally every day you're interfacing with it differently you, there's variables you're going to not account for yeah. and so it's like we, we just want to we want to make it a lot more straightforward and it's just like it, we, we can't handle like if, if you're going to pitch it to me you have to make it like this nice tight box of yes. like you're going to have this uh nutrition plan you're going to have this uh training plan with it and that's really what's going to be the formula yeah i you know if you want to live in a world where you're surrounded by very convenient relatively ex inexpensive uh engineered right to be hyper palatable foods uh, then you're going to have to figure out the behavior piece because you're going to you're walking around in it. You're around it constantly. It's like if you have an issue with alcohol and you live in a bar, like okay, that's going to be hard, man. You're mm -hmm. going to you so you're moving around in the world, uh, in the modern world, surrounded by marketers and engineers who've really designed uh, these things to be hard to resist. And on top of that, you have your own challenges. So if you don't work on those things, it's not, and look, the data supports it. What I'm saying is not backed by, it's backed by 
of the data. The data shows this is one of the most difficult things uh, that people can do. So it's it's extremely important. I, one of the first times that this really came to me was I had this incredible, you know, trainer that worked in one of my studios when I was a trainer back in the day. And I remember her saying to her clients, she would say this all the time, oh, don't worry about anything. Don't track anything. Just don't eat anything in a box or a wrapper. Just don't eat processed food. Just eat whole natural foods, eat, eat as much as you want. And I remember hearing that initially and going, that's not going to work. Like they're just going to overeat anyway and whatever. And then they'd all start losing weight. And I'm like, God, is there really, like, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, there's no like, you know, inherently, you know, fattening or whatever things in these foods. And I talked to her about it. I said, what, what else is happening with them? And she goes, they eat less. And then it was like, it hit me like a brick. Of course, mm -hmm. those foods are not designed to make you overeat like processed foods are. So you're not even telling them to eat less. She goes, no, if I tell them to eat less, they're going to want to eat more. So I just <laughs> tell them to eat as much as they want. Yeah. Just stay in this food category, which is huge. It's a huge, it's whole foods. Eat foods that are whole and natural. Eat as much as you want. And they end up coming up to me and saying how full they are and everybody's losing weight. And that's that was one of the first times I was like, oh, okay. It's like, <laughs> we're not robots. I can't just give people instructions yeah, that they can input. It's weird though, because you think there'd be a real clear, definitive behavioral human psychology study that would like outline this for everybody. I'm like, yeah, of course this works the best. But I feel like, you know, tech, companies have figured it out you know food companies have figured out how to manipulate people into yeah. like uh literally behaving uh as a consumer and as somebody that's going to continuously utilize their product and they figured that out they figured out how to hack into that why can't we you know do the opposite like what's what's best for us is hack into what's best for us and like abandon uh you know a lot of the the programming yeah, 100%. It's so funny i uh i had a call this weekend so, you know, that group that I'm a part of the Hampton yeah, group yeah. with all those uh, founders and stuff like that. Well, one of them who's a buddy of mine, JT, who reached out to me and he's like, Hey, you know, would you talk, uh, to a friend of a friend who's got this startup company and they're on their, you know, like they're on their seed round, uh, of raising for this app. And he's, par he's partnered with this guy that's Instagram famous. He's got like 5 million followers like that, like a. Uh, YouTube star kind of kid or whatever like that. I didn't know who he was, although I've heard of the name before. Um, and this guy's a trainer has been one for a long time. Well, he's been one for like, a, like I think eight or nine years, something like that. And he got on the phone with me and JT really wanted me to kind of explain to him because JT came to me first about being an investor, like, cons like mm -hmm. us considering. And I like shot it down like really mm -hmm. fast. Like, yeah, no, this is not. And so he's like, you know, could you do me a favor and and talk to this guy? And I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> so <laughs> I agreed as a, as a favor to JT. And, uh, you know, the guy gets on and he does this whole pitch deck and like does everything for me. And I, my response to him, instead of like just being just like shutting it down completely, was just like, hey, why don't you, if you think this is going to be so great and you have that kind of muscle and power, your, your best friend has got the 5 million followers, you guys are in it. Why don't you fund this all yourself? And he's just like, well, you know, we need to hurt this and that. And he gave these like reasons why he, he needed that capital now. And I said, well, because I do think you're sitting on a million dollar idea. I said, with that large of a following, with your trainer background, the user interface that you're describing to me sounds really cool. I said, but you, you do realize you're not solving a problem, right? Like you're like the obesity problem and wh where we're at right now. Like you, do you really think it's an app? That's solving. I said, like, you should listen to the episode we did with the, totally. the tonal CEO. Mm -hmm. If you think that's what it is, it's not tech. Tech is not is is not going to solve us from the obesity no. epidemic. It's not needing more science and more detail and more or more more uh, easy access to this information that is going to get people. It's behavioral change, yeah. and it's so unique and individualized that no algorithm AI tool is going to be able to solve that. Mm -mm. And and because it literally is a moving target every day, like I think it's, and so it was totally, you could tell, I mean, you tell somebody that they're, yeah, you just, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like just was definitely. He, was he crapped out? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he actually, he took it just like probably most founders that are motivated are like, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show oh, you. Yeah, 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 you know, and I told him, I said, hey. Interesting take. Hey, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for you. Yeah. In fact, I, I hope you prove me wrong. I'll talk all about it on my show uh, if and when it goes and does well. I said, but, 
I, I do think that you have a big enough following that you guys can make a million. But he, you're trying to—he's already talking about a, a hundred million dollar exit. Yeah. You know, scaling to the size and getting thirty million dollars in reoccurring revenue. Our, our industry is completely littered with uh, ups and downs and fads, and it's because yeah. they all come up with an idea. Yep. Like this is the secret. This is what it is. You have more. You'll have more. I'll say this right now, and I'll stand by this. You would have more success solving people's obesity or health issues by them following a spiritual practice than you would by them getting an, an app. Okay. Why? Because that is actually tapping into the behavioral issues. They'd have more success going to a therapist than they would with apps. Why? Because it's tapping into behavioral issues. You have to fundamentally change your relationship to food and yourself for this to stick forever. It's, Otherwise, you're going to white knuckle you know, this that, rest of your life. That's not that... Yeah. Um, that's not that uh, like um, hot. That's not that much of a hot take to say that, in my yeah. opinion. It's so. It's actually really obvious when you understand that. I think people when you, hear that they would say, when, "You know what? You're right." When you're yeah, yeah. when you're when you're over when you're overweight by 30, 40, 50, when you're obese, uh, you are using food as a as a drug as a medication. Yeah. You're, you're medicating it's an, yourself. It's an abuse. Mechanism. It's an abuse. Yeah, and yeah. so so it's 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 would be very obvious if someone had a cocaine or a heroin problem with, with what you just said, right? If you want to solve that better than getting some workout program yeah. or diet program, you'd want to see a therapist and fix that. Well, that seems so obvious because you're what a about, great example because you're using heroin and cocaine. Yeah. No one would even say anything no. about that, but because it's uh, working out and fitness, it's just like you understand that it's the same issue. They're just using a different thing to medicate. Yeah, you're right. hundred mm percent. -hmm. So it's no different. So of course, working on yourself and 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 getting to the bottom of this what what is causing me to mindlessly eat and stuff my face or even or make these choices yeah, and make, decisions yes. i know i'm not supposed to it's not, it's not like you know, people think like that the average 50 60 pound overweight individual just is 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 dumb they, know, yeah. they don't know any better yeah, like, they, like they show up to mcdonald's no, on no, no, accident no. like not knowing that it's not good for them most of them know yeah. first of all most of them know they're overweight most of them know they need to do something about their health most of them know when they eat some of the foods that they eat that yeah it's probably not yeah. great it's probably not good for me i probably should make some of these so they're not we're not dealing with necessarily an information that's issue. That's right. That's right. Uh, except for maybe the information they're getting communicated is uh, fads and <laughs> it's this, you know, new diet plan or this new secret. It's none of those things, man. It's so that that's the challenge, what you yeah. just said right there, Sal, is that it the that's not the answer. And in addition to that, the information that is 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 prevalent in our space is a lot of bad stuff. That's right. And so you have the combination of approaching the problem incorrectly in the first place. And then in addition to that, there's so many quick fix money schemes to get rich fast for for people. Which reinforces them to not get going with their uh, progress yes. anyway. You know what happens yes. is you end up following three, four of them throughout your whole life and it doesn't work. And then this is what happens. Oh, that, bro, I, this is what I said to him. This too. will, this, I, 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 it's not for me. My, I have, it's my genetics. I can never do this. I don't understand it. I eat less than people who I know who are fit or skinny. What is going on? And then they give up. They give up because, well, but I don't blame them. I don't blame them because they've tried hard uh, yeah. and they've tried three or four things that other people said worked. And then it didn't work for them long term. They just can't figure it out. And then it's like, is it because I'm lazy? I remember I'd have clients that were so hardworking and successful. And I initially, when I became a trainer, was like, oh, it's just a discipline thing. Then I trained these executives. You know, when you're a personal trainer, there's a bit of a self-selection bias because people who can afford personal training tend to have more expendable income. Personal training is not cheap. Yep. So I get these really successful people. I'm like, this has nothing to do with lack of discipline. No. And, and the fact that they don't work hard. Like every person I'm training here has got a lot of it in other yeah. aspects of life. They're it's, not a sloth, you know. You know, what is <laughs> it that there's, else, yeah. this is a challenge and we can't figure out how to work on this challenge. And it took me 10 years as a trainer, really cared about people to figure this out because I did it wrong. And I was in the field, you know, I was an expert, a quote unquote expert um, in the field. Hey, sorry to interrupt. We have a free guide titled Understanding Your Mood, Stress, and Sleep. It tackles all of those things from a health and longevity perspective. It's a totally, totally free guide. So just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. You know, it's funny you brought up an app. You made me think of the, the craziest thing I've ever seen when it comes to an app ever. Really? Okay. okay. It's the craziest thing. Maybe Doug can look it up. Uh, so. It's called, I looked it up. It's like some, it's a sunlight app and I can't remember the name of it. Sunlight Let me see app. if I can find it. It's called, um, wait, 
Okay, dude. Wait, this is, is this part of it's, my notes? It's called ref, Reflect this, Orbital. Did you write? Did you see this too? Is this the one that you can direct sunlight at night? Yes. Bro, I read the same thing. Did you see that? <laughs> yes. What are you guys talking about? So you can, okay. There's this. You can, you can point, and I don't know if this is a satellite or something. It has yes. like a mirror where you can literally summon sunlight at middle middle of the night, right? At a point. The, the sun, you could, if it's up high enough in the atmosphere, you know, you could literally direct Use it a down to a, to a location. <laughs> It sounds like it would burn a hole through you. No, no, yeah. <laughs> it's not a laser. <laughs> yeah, it's not that intense. It just sounds like it. <laughs> no, not, no, no. Literally, okay, this wait, company, wait. this company's put is going to be putting out tons of satellites, and so they put up this video. It's like a, Bro, it's like that. a, um, a demo of what it's going to look like. And literally, you'd be able to get on your app, order sunlight at a particular location. That's not middle possible. Middle. Yeah, it's called. Of course, it's possible. Oh no, never mind. That was. A it's called reflectal yes, re orbital, okay. and maybe yeah. Doug, look it up because you'll see the 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 demonstration of what Bro, it look like. Uh, so okay, so thirty thousand people have signed I'm up for it. I'm Justin's neighbor. Okay, we yeah. live next to each other, yes. right? And he's trying to sleep. It's midnight. And I decide <laughs> I'm going to order some sunlight. Yes, to yes. my house. Yeah. They, and it's they not actually mentioned that him. this might I mean, be a potential problem. People like abusing, yes. it, like like shining it, like as a as a prank. Yeah. So so is this it right here? Is this the demonstration of it? He does demonstrate. Yes. Right. What? Yeah. No, this dude, is crazy. Bro, look, this is. So possible. like he, you see the app, you tap on it. Oh, I want some you, you sunlight. Mean, and then boom, it's location. on. Him. Look at that. And then you got sunlight in the middle of the night. And then it just directs out of the sky. Now, now this here's can't be real. Now here's the here's why this is cool. I mean, I read about this. Now at first you're like, oh, okay, it's an app. People are gonna have fun with tangibly, it. Tangibly, it makes sense that you could do that. Well, here's where it's really gonna get it'd be cool. Okay, they're gonna put up thousands of these satellites. The idea is for them to be able to shine sunlight on solar farms twenty four seven. That's it. Yeah. That was so you'll the original have, idea. For you'll it. have solar farms set up and you'll be able to just. That's brilliant. Yes. Reflect sunlight from the sun to solar farms all day long. So you just. All night long. hours of yeah, uh, yeah, sun charging. Bro, the, why is this not talked more about? This is crazy. It just, it just exploded. Like it literally yeah, it just, just went happened. viral. <laughs> yeah. We were, you I and was I tripping on that. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? I, don't, I, I, I know I just saw it, but I still don't believe it. It just, it doesn't seem like, and also that is going to be a massive problem. Well, yeah. there's a lot of questions because yes, they haven't dude, done it yet. You can't have, where's the regulation yet? Cause like, <laughs> like what I'm do you do? Mess with some people. Yes. We should get it now and start. Yeah. Hey, I, when I saw that clip, yeah. by the way, imagine this is like, imagine your boy, like Justin's my neighbor. Here, right? And I, <laughs> and I set it up and I GPS it like, and I put my phone underneath his, his bedroom window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <And he's> like, <laughs> Wake <laughs> up, bitch. It's yeah. just like, boom, at midnight, he's got a sunlight blast. And set his alarm to go off. So he's tricked. Oh, it is daytime. Uh, you're getting dressed. This yeah. can't wow. be like a or your real. Buddy's your, your buddy's taking a piss and outside. Now, how, how does it yeah. shed the light on a real? How quick. does it like? Uh, <laughs> how does it concentrate such a small, like uh, mirrors? Just a tiny one? Is that I like? I don't know, Adam. Yeah, yeah this is. Like, hey, they didn't show the satellite hey, how that yeah. all works. I don't know the science. <laughs> no, yeah, yes. it just it, it has to do with mirrors. It logically, <laughs> you know, I could kind of put it together. You know, it's like okay, that yeah. could. Now are we get, are we possibly getting trolled? No, no, it's a real company. It's That's a real always company. a possibility. I, it up. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't I, throw I, that out. Yeah, I, I, I feel like we could be getting trolled. Is this Doug? like a really bad? It's, is this it, like another way to do a trailer for a stupid movie coming out? You know, they do that a couple times. Uh, yes, uh, yes. It's yeah, a new sci-fi movie. Like those you guys um, got pranked. Uh, what were those? those the mono, those mirrored monocle. Yeah, yeah monoliths. monoliths. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I know it's. It's. I looked it up. And it's, it's, you know, I thought when I saw it immediately, I thought, first off, the solar farm thing, I think that's the commercial application. I think that's brilliant. Yeah. But I immediately, when I saw it, I was like, wow, imagine what a great way to propose. You go on a, like a midnight well, hike with your girl. And then you're like, you sounds, make up some speech about the sunlight shining on our relationship. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. It's less crazy than the other stuff I was reading about, you know, when China was trying to make their own like smaller, like nuclear fission, like sun. Oh, that they I were like, about that. You didn't read about that? No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they've they've been talking like crazy stuff like that, like trying to be able to, you know, create their own like mini sun to like become like a little power plant. That sounds sounds like a bad it idea. It sounds like uh, something out of um, like Doctor Octopus yeah, or something dude. would create. You know? <laughs> yeah, great crazy sci fi. What was which one of you was uh, the the Ukraine robot dogs? Oh yeah, they're going to be putting them out. Um, to this is also for sure not military. being trolled. Like yeah, we're gonna no, have Doug, robot dogs, dogs running around in no in war Doug, zones look this now. Up. Yeah, this U Ukraine robot dogs. Let's see if I have it in my notes and some of my older notes because I wrote that up there a, a little while ago. But like uh, like military, like we're yeah. talking about on the battlefields kind of thing. Yeah, are oh, they God. are they strapped with guns? No, they're, what are, what they, they said are they that the they're using that them dead well, bodies. 
you see that, right? They what? said they said that they're using them for. Um, let me see if I can find it. Maybe Doug, you could look it up to see. They said that they're using them to like get um, what are they called mines and to go oh. out or whatever. But I mean, these are all autonomous. Yeah, Britain's new ro yeah, Britain's new robot dogs aiding Ukraine terrorizing Russia as drones continue dominating the battlefield. Wow. So these things are going to cruise around and patrol. Now, what are they going to do? These like the Boston Dynamics robots, like those dog. Yes. So did you guys watch that Black Mirror episode with that, 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 I think it was a woman running from a robot dog trying to kill her? It's terrifying. Yeah. It's terrifying. Oh, yeah, it's like the movie Terminator, except real. It'd yeah, there it is. Super sketchy. So they just go out with these robot dogs. So I guess that's not that crazy because it's not that much, because they already had, we already had like remote control cars that they do this yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah, these yeah. little tanks. And like yeah. So it's just weird now because they look like dogs. Yeah. But these things can go, I mean, they can go on all kinds of different terrain. Yeah, and they can go fast. Did you see the too. video? Pretty fast. Did you see the video of the 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 tanks getting hit by drones? Yeah, Ta the no. tanks that were driving, and then they just had just like kamikaze, kamikaze drones just hitting them, and they couldn't do shit about it. Oh wow! Really? Yeah, dude. Actually, or or like 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 soldiers trying to hide, and they'll just you know hit them. Yeah, they attack the drone. weak points, and it it worked. It blew blew it up. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. What? It's pretty crazy, I know, dude. I Did you? I so I had in my notes since we're talking about tech and war and all this crazy shit. Have you guys seen the it, the the sublethal turrets for home security? I did, I did rubber bullets. Yes, this is sick. You can shoot rubber bullets Bro, from this your is house. Sick. No way. Yes, and it's remote. It's all remote. You can co control from your phone or anything like that, and it shoots rubber bullets from uh, people <laughs> that you're coming into your property. That's kind of sick. That's fun. That's yeah. really cool. I feel like it would be a now. Of course, the the qu the quick question is like, okay, how does this thing know the difference between the FedEx guy, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Girl Scout <laughs> cookies. Yeah. There's like a lawsuit lawsuit <laughs> waiting to happen, right? Somebody getting well, is it auto is it automatic or I think you have to shoot it. I I don't know. I think when I was watching it, it sets up like if someone's intruding. If it's I, I think you have parameters, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like if you if I don't think it's automatic, that'd be crazy. It is. Or it just turns on. Yeah, it didn't show a person. If I, there it is right there. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Armed and fighting within four seconds. What? Wow. That's a weird picture. I was just going to say, that's such a random image. Have, like, jumping. People jumping on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Ah, enjoy freedom <laughs> yeah. by shooting people with rubber bullets. Does yeah, it show a little uh, example, Doug? Marketing ad. Yeah, I'll see. Yeah. Uh, Rub oh, here, yeah. You have this little video here. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, right that's here. the one I saw. Yeah. It's like night vision. You still have night vision attached to it. You should shoot people. With that isn't, that, isn't that crazy? I mean, that'll take care of, like, well, because isn't that such a huge problem? People just snatching your oh my God. Uh, Amazon so packages. So I wasn't familiar with, like, how some of this cool. So uh, I went to uh, a buddy of mine. He's into, um, like, flipping really high end homes. He buys, like, these up in the, like, Los Gatos Hills and stuff yeah. like that. These multi million dollar houses, dumps, like, a couple million into them and then sells them for Uber dollars, right? And. He told me that, like, as we roll up to, he's showing me one of the properties and we roll up and there's this crazy, like, security, like, it's got a big solar thing attached to it and it's just the camera. As soon as we, as soon as we walk in, his, his business partner is calling him right away. He's like, who's the property? And he's just like, oh, it's me. It's my, I'm with my buddy. I'm showing the him. Guns go, so it, it, it was, uh, so I guess this, he was telling me that it's got facial recognition. It will read a car that's going by and be able to pick the license plate up. And then if it passes a second time, It'll alert. It'll alert you wow. if it recognizes a face uh, more than one. It'll alert you. Like it has all these crazy wow. features. Look at this oh, one cool. shooting the guy trying to break his car. <laughs> uh, See, I think it's automatic. It's so fun. It is automatic. It I is think. automatic, yeah. right? Yeah. No, this is in South Africa. That's oh this. yeah. So South Africa has got crazy crime, wow. bro. That's where I was reading about it. Isn't that sick? They have crazy crime. So the people have properties there where yeah. you have armed personnel twenty four seven. Otherwise, I was reading a whole article about this. In fact. Dang. Yeah, that's how bad it is over there. Wow. Isn't that wild? That is wild. I do. I want one All of right. these. All right, I'm going to take a yeah. turn here. Okay. Tell you guys about my weekend. Yeah. I went to, I had probably one of the most incredible experiences over the weekend over some, I never thought in a million years I would ever do. What's that? I went to a Christian worship music concert. Oh, wow. Never, Brandon Lake, Phil Wickham, which they have exceptional music. Brandon Lake, by the way, I didn't know this, my wife told me. He had two or three songs in the top as number one and two of all music. Yeah. This is Christian worship music. Yeah. So apparently there's this like revival. Like recently? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yes. So we go to this Oakland arena, 10,000 people. Hmm. So it's like, a, it's a concert, 10,000 people in there. And I'd never experienced that 
like a feeling like that ever in my entire life. It was like, you, I mean, you could feel, I mean, I could feel, you know, the spirit moving and it was, here was the difference. It wasn't about the, the, the performers. Everybody was cheering for them. It was sure. all for God. It was sure. such an incredible, so uh, interesting. I mean, there were children there. There were a lot of teenagers. There were people my age as well. People were just. It was the craziest mood. People were hugging, singing along. At one point, they're you know they're talking. It's, again, this is a concert. Someone yells from the crowd. Remember, it's ten thousand people. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I love Jesus. The whole crowd erupts in cheers in Oakland. Like this is wow. such a wild yeah, experience. It is you, wild. Uh, you think like that was like probably the best example of like a, a group flow feeling that you've experienced. Mm -hmm. I've experienced group uh, flow and sporting events uh, and concerts before, but this one felt so joyful and for it wasn't about like ego and like like I remember when Italy won the World Cup in. What year was it that they won? 2006. I was in San Francisco. I want to say it was 2006. And we were in Little Italy. So were, we were surrounded by a lot of Italians. And they won and we all cheered. And it was yeah. this big. But it's very much about our country, you know, our nation, our team or whatever. Yeah. This was a totally different feeling. It was not about hmm. us. It was about. Interesting. Yeah. But it was an incredible feeling. How, did you go uh, kids too or just you? No, just the wife and just I. Just you and Jessica? Yeah, just oh, the wow. wife and I. Did you guys we make were... a whole night out of it? Was it like yeah, a, a, a date night and everything? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. It was great. It was great. So we're going to be doing more of those, I think. I didn't, I'm, I'm assuming yeah. you found through church. They, you guys, someone showed No, I told you How guys. You find one out? of the one of the um, you know One of the changes that I noticed in myself once I fully became a Christian was I had these kind of supernatural changes in me. One of them was the music I listened to, which you guys know, you, you guys have known me for a long time. I've been working out since I was a child. <laughs> you went from death metal to the, <laughs> like, quite the switch. There bro. are a few things that I don't change. Okay. Yeah. And you guys know this. I don't change the music I work out to for anybody or yeah. anything. It doesn't change. I'm listening to, it's either EDM. That's as soft as I could go, or it's going to be death metal. Or Inya with Jessica. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, which like EDM ish. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's it. But it's usually death metal. All of a sudden, I'm listening to like worship music while I'm working out. So that was, and this is in, you know, in genres that I would never touch. You remember my opinion on country? Yeah. Hated it. Yeah. Absolutely hated it. Now all you're of a sudden. To it. Yeah. All of a sudden. God opened you to country. There's For there's sure. Oh. This is great. Or certain types, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, it was great. Worked on it was a really, really yeah. great, it was a really great time. That's it was great, great to hear everybody singing together and just. It's just super positive vibes. And super just, positive. Yeah. You were, uh, you were in Denver. How was that? Yeah, it was Did you go great. any Christian concerts? What'd you do? No, not this time, but... Um, <laughs> not this time? <laughs> yeah. It was in a... So it was in a resort that was like the one in Tennessee. So you remember the Gaylords Resort? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. So they do one in the, in the Rockies, I guess. And um, we had been there with the kids, you know, briefly when I was coming back from Minnesota <laughs> and kind of doing this little mini uh, vacation. And so, like, uh, we stayed there. Uh, and it was, it was epic, epic facility. Uh, but, uh, and then we went to go visit our friend, Brian Kula. So he was doing a grand opening of his new facility for the sports, uh, training center. That's all speed driven. Like the only place I've ever seen that has like a legit track, like, like 40 yard dashes, 40 yard dashes, wow. like all side by side, they could all race each other. And then the most like top of the line, uh, Kaiser equipment. So I didn't know Kaiser. I only knew they made like a few of these uh, the air, pneumatic air compressed stuff, right? pneumatic yeah. type equipment, but um, they had every single piece you could yeah. possibly want. And we played with all of it. it you know like why I like crazy. Kaiser? You could be explosive. Yes. That's you know, why you that's, can't do that with like any other. Not with weight stacks. You know, the, you know that's machines. been around for a really long time. Yep. It's yes. one of the oldest Like machines. 20 years. Yeah. I, like I. Uh, it just wasn't popular. Yeah. Well, there was a, there was a gym in San Luis Obispo. Um, and I don't remember for the life of me what it was, but it was like when I barely, I just got into training, mm -hmm, like yeah. just barely been into it. And somebody took me to it and the entire gym was, was these guys. And I don't know if it was Kaiser was the brand at the time, but it was all the air compressed like stuff. It's the and only can, machine that you can use where you could generate as much power as you want. And you're not going to, the more you, the more power you generate, the more it resists. Yeah. It's so weird too. Cause uh, we we're trying to figure out when we we're, you know, doing one of the, one of them was like a chest press and, um, so you have two buttons on one side, like mm -hmm. actually adds to the resistance. One yeah. like decreases. We only saw the one, and like so we were like, it was getting harder. And I'm like, this isn't 
uh, easier, like to, to push fast. And then I figured, figured out that the other side, you, you, you know, let the air out, but then it's like, it makes so much sense. It's so smooth and, and you could, you could accelerate yep. at a really high, high level. Yep. So that's the thing I was like, really really stoked on those uh, piece of equipment. It was now cool. you had the boys with you. Did you, did you shoot content for the trainers? So we shot content. I got to oh, interview cool. him. Um, and, uh, we, we did it mainly based for our, our coaches. And so, uh, our coaching program, like we we're building content in there. So they know that there's other aspects of fitness that have massive opportunity. And we don't really explore or talk a lot about like, you know, the, the, uh, strength coach world, the athletic training, you know, world, the, the student athlete kind of world. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of business opportunity there. Obviously not everybody has the same formula, how they do it, but I was trying to kind of peel back, like, you know, how, Brian was able to set that all up, how he's now like multiple facilities in, like he's, he's done these licensing deals with uh 24 hour fitness. And he's really like, obviously he's, he trains like Chris McCaffrey, a lot of Olympic athletes, and, he's great. Um, but like that just doesn't happen. Like it was, it's really like uh, his discipline going into it. Uh, and then that creating uh, these opportunities that like timings, everything. And it just keeps proving it. Do you know, I, I don't remember when we interviewed him, did we did, I don't remember if we talked to him about like his journey, like how he became a trainer and how yeah, long. Yeah, his dad was a coach, right? His dad was a coach okay. and inspired him, yeah. Yeah, yeah I couldn't remember how long he had like kind of trained for before like he had his break. Like, do you know how long? We I got mean, into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I was a little unclear of that as well. Um, but he, so he got his kinesiology degree and then he started working on the programming aspect of it and got a CSCS, uh, but he was actually coaching first. So he was, he was coaching track and field mm -hmm. and then football. And then he started, you know, just by demand started uh, to go the individual route. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool stuff. Okay. You know what I learned about, um, recently, you guys have heard of the gut brain axis. We've talked about that of course, many yeah, times. Of course. There's a gut skin axis too. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a strong connection between what? your gut health and your skin. Now, we've known this, you know, um, Which that makes medicine. sense. That makes sense. For example, uh, one of the things that will flare up psoriasis it, is stress. If I get stress right away, I don't or care you how good, something that's I don't awful. care how my diet is. Mm -hmm. Even my diet's good, but if I've got a high level of stress, it'll also express itself in my psoriasis. Yeah, so, so, so very strong sense. correlations between acne, um, psoriasis, eczema, and other skin conditions, and gut inflammation. So they're calling it the gut skin axis. Hmm. Um, so I went in and started reading more and more about this, and there's big studies on this. This is a big deal. Now, I remember having clients who had kids that were had issues with acne, and I remember the dermatologist saying it had nothing to do with anything you ate. And I remember as a trainer thinking, that doesn't make sense because I know when I eat certain things, things happen to my skin or whatever. But there is. There's, they literally call it the gut skin axis. So then, of course, this reminded me of some of the messages that we get from people that work with some of the companies that sponsor us, like Seed. One of, I'd say, probably the second or third most popular thing we'll hear from people is they say their skin gets cleared up, mm -hmm. that they'll start taking Seed's probiotic, yeah. and they notice benefits um, in their skin. So probiotics, uh, and this is now well documented. If you If you Google probiotic and skin health, uh, you'll see positive uh, effects from improving your gut health through a probiotic when it comes to th you know normal uh, type skin issues. That also led me to, to think about our other company we work with, Caldera, and their product. And of course, that is specifically for the skin. You put it on your face. And, and a natural one. And what it does is if you look at the ingredients in Caldera, they are natural compounds, natural oils that help um, facilitate a healthy microbiome on the skin. A lot of people don't know this, but most skin yeah. products, Doesn't especially for acne, yeah. they're designed to kill everything. Yeah, Just, it's like throwing a nuke on your face. But you, what happens when you do that, if there's an issue, you get rid of all the bacteria, the bad bacteria then grow up, grow again, and you got to keep redoing this, and then it damages your skin and stuff like that. So, um, and the coincidence, we have both partners on uh, today's episode, and I'm like, I have yet to recommend both together. Right. If someone has a skin issue. Mutually issues, beneficial for sure. If you have skin issues, Caldera plus seed is like the one, two punch. Like mm -hmm. you've got gut health hand, or, you know, handled, and then you've got something that helps facilitate um, healthy skin. 
through a healthy microbiome on your skin. Like that's got to be well, one of the best combinations. Two, I know I kind of brought this up the last time we had, you know, a, a commercial for seed, but like uh, I've been like pretty religious about taking it just because of what I had read about in terms of it, like helping to prevent uh, COVID or any of these other like yeah. uh, viral uh, uh, transmissions. Uh, and so, uh, and it's been great for my whole family because we've been definitely around a lot of people right now. It's like rampant. Like there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, a lot of it going around, a lot of people getting sick. And so it's been, it's been keeping us pretty healthy and, and, and thinking about that more of like to repopulate, you know, your gut with better bacteria is like a huge uh, component to uh, keeping your immune system. Yeah, I totally. need to be better about taking my seeds. It's funny though, you're, that you're going this direction because I did just get a, a compliment on, on my skin this weekend, but this makes sense. Now I'm con very consistent with Caldera. I like it's, yeah. it sits right here. You I have put my, it on before. We yeah. I, I, consistent. I'm very consistent with that. I wish I was more consistent with, seed but i'm also uh like i've been in this really low calorie diet for some time so my i'm sure my gut has been taking low inflammation yeah low inflammation paired with being consistent with caldera so i'm in a although i'm not maximizing it by utilizing seed like i should be that explains why i probably got the compliment this this weekend over that is because of it is really good right now and i'm sure it is because of how low calorie i am my, my gut's bring, coming down inflammation wise and then the combination of using caldera all the time that's awesome. i got a question for you guys so i mean i was actually watching uh this show which is an old show it's like six feet under you know, yeah you yeah, ever watch it. that yeah it's like just all about death and whatever and then i got this um this ad and it was uh would you consider this like it's like a coffin it's this very specific coffin like when you die uh that um it, they this company builds them and it's the mycelium coffin and so basically the whole thing like houses you in almost so like you this go, pod right like a coffin let me tell you me guess it turns you into a tree or something like that yeah like it, it literally decomposes you and then you become like some <laughs> kind of plant uh, and they also have it for like an urn version. So if you want to like cremate and then you do it that way and then you could plant yourself <laughs> and live on as like some, you know, like fungus cool. or, or tree. Kind of feel like I would do that. I was like, I was like, I might consider that. Isn't there, a, isn't there a practice in the Pacific islands where they would take like they would throw the, the, the body out to and feed sharks with it. Or am I making something up here? Oh, I don't know. That sounds. Like, know. Is that a that's thing? How did they float them out and they burn them? Oh, that's what they do. No, that's the that's Vikings. The Vikings. Yeah. Oh, the Vikings. Did they really do that, or is that just movies? But yeah, they did that for sure. Or is that where they put yeah, the coins on their eyes? Yeah, they did all that stuff. They yeah. did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like a romantic. You know, I mean, I think it I would, is romantic, but it's I think rituals, I would do that, you know? Justin. I think I would you live on turn into like an oak, like an oak tree. Something that I want a tree that lives for a, a long big, time. Big tree. Yeah. yeah, big tree. Big tree that lives a long time. You want to be, be like there. some weak yeah. little, you know? yeah. <laughs> like a rose bush or yeah. something like that. I don't want something like, like I don't poison want something. ivy or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't want something that's that right, like, easily gets trampled. Yeah. I want something that's going to be there for a long yeah. time. Yeah. It's going to be solid. Like, how long? Like, what are some of the. There's a trivia for you, Doug. What are some of the uh, trees that live the longest? Any guesses? Oh, redwood. Redwood, sequoia. Right? Sequoia. Sequoias, sequoias live. Yeah. A long I think those are the longest living. Those are the biggest. Right? They're the biggest. I don't know. If they're I thought the they were the longest living. I don't know. I think you're right. Longest the grand living sequoias. Trees. Yeah, because that's the 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 biggest tree in the world is is like up this Pacific coast somewhere. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. the sequoia trees. Yeah, right, sequoia. they get huge. Right? Yeah. Let's see. What does it say there? <clears throat> so the longest living is the Great Basin bristlewood uh, bristle cone pine. Sorry, see, you didn't even see what? you guys. You guys would have. I been was just about to say that. Oh, yeah, the bristle <laughs> yeah. cone pine. Duh. <laughs> uh, where is that at where are those at eastern california oh we're good oh see yeah. we are in you, want be, in, you want to be turned into one of those trees yeah i want one of those trees okay. you guys could be the top i, I just so want there's to be... one tree that's 4853 years old bro uh, yes what so game can you pick the tree i don't know i think yeah you, you put uh seeds in there with it and then the um i just turn you into a tomato plant yeah the mycelium helps kind of foster the uh you know <laughs> decompose you into your nutrients i think i would do you it. become nutrients would you do it? i would do it what no really nah, that's weird you're just a i mean you're just like a body well i was gonna, i was gonna get burned up anyway so i may as well do yeah. that you're gonna do cremation yeah i don't i don't i don't it doesn't sit well with me being six feet under in dirt but being burned is better it is 
What's the difference? I don't know. I'm like more claustrophobic. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. I'm less hmm. afraid of fire, more afraid Can we have of, you in, like, if you, something happened to you, can we have you in here with like a urine? A, 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 yeah. a urn or whatever urn, it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no urine. Yeah. 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 urn. Yeah. We yearn for the urn. <laughs> yeah, I'd want, yeah, I'd want you guys to carry Just me put around. it up in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would trick Justin. Or like a little too. lock or like a little lock. <laughs> you know what I'd do? I'd trick Justin. I would put like, I'd take a tablespoon and put it in his protein powder and not tell him. What? And you drink it and just add Adam. It's like, anabolic. Oh, this tastes like, like oh my Adam. God, I feel yeah. like so much smarter right now. This tastes crazy. <laughs> Why are you in a bad mood, Justin? <laughs> 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 oh. Why are you yelling at everybody? Oh. I just say, I just had this shit's getting done. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a tablespoon of Adam <laughs> in my protein. Stupid. Yeah. Did you guys see the x-ray? Uh, I should have brought this up earlier. I talked you had something you also wanted to ask me. You were what? waiting for the podcast. You, were, you guys were talking about something. You're like, no, I want to ask Adam on the podcast. And then you never did. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. had to do with housing. Oh, oh, yes. oh, 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 oh! All right, all right. This is can I, annoying can we, news. Can I can I get to yeah, that right. in a second? Oh yeah, whatever. Let me get to. That in I a mean, second. I have no yeah, idea what it is. That's an, it's it's yeah. going to be negative. Yes, oh, it's negative. negative. Yeah. It's not, not a negative it's, thing about you. Uh, no, 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 there was a man there. And a long time ago in the 80s, they did an analysis of a piece of the fabric. And they said, oh, this is only, this is not 2,000 years old. But then there's some controversy. And they said, well, it was probably repaired. There was some newer fabric attached to it. So they did a new type of analysis and found it was, in fact, 2,000 years old. So it may very well be what they say it is. But what's, what's the thought of that? Because it left an, an impression on there of, yeah. of, of a figure of a man uh, like it was some kind of like irradiation, yes. like radiation effect yeah. to, to, to leave that kind of marking. That's what they, that's the thought, that's right? That's what they thought. So yeah. they did an AR, AI rendering of what the man underneath it looked like. Doug, pull up. Shut up. Shroud of Turin AI rendering. And look at this picture. It's, it's Does it look like Gandalf? Or no, what? no. It looks like what you would think. It looks like Jesus? Yeah. Of yeah. course. It look, it, it, so AI, so but they looked at the shroud and you can make out like through negatives or whatever with photos, you can make out what the person looks like. But this AI rendering. Now the only it, thing that is that makes this interesting to me is like how much like so like I had no idea about this and no one's getting, it's getting no pub, but like. Oh, it's all over. We, whenever we, oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh yeah. The AI images at least. Let me see if this is the one that I, that I, yeah. That's it, the one in the middle. Whoa. So, so see on the right with the with the shroud. Okay, so if you scroll down a little what bit, a Doug, trip. that 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 kind of bottom right, the one right there is what the shroud looks like with when they do like a negative image of it or whatever. But the AI image is in the middle, so AI made it look okay. This is what the person looked like, dude. Yeah. It looks just like you would think they could get that because <laughs> I've always seen that one. It almost looks like uh, um, okay. It's like a negative of a photo. I've got a lot right? of problems with this. Okay, Why? first me too. Of, Knights yeah. Templar. Okay. First of all, I thought we've uh, we've already we've already been uh, we already figured out that like the imagery that's been passed down in all these paintings and pictures is not even a good image of Jesus. Anyways, that, that he didn't even look anything like that. That's yeah. what they say. So I've heard that. But, but this yeah. is why there's so much controversy. And is then, that, that the Shroud you, of Turin shows that? How, how does it show that? Like, how does how do they get? An, well, so on the right, it, initially blanket. they debunked it like a long time ago, and they tried to say that an artist like like painted it on there or something. No, I there's think been people other, want to believe. There's been hey, there's yeah. other there's others. Uh, I, I think it has the Catholic Church of it said it's official, or is it still controversial? Oh, it I don't know. Then. I mean, yeah. well, they do <laughs> the church own, says it. It's got they do be their right. own. They I mean, they do people really, love really relics. Heavy though, you investigations. Know, it's, like, it's hard to like. I mean, it's Take kind of in their best away. interest, though, to show that it looks like that. Uh, you know what I'm maybe. Kind of. Uh, kind I don't of, know. Maybe. But I do think it's interesting. So they is. used... Maybe they so should So they used, used a dating process uh, involving something called wide-angle X-ray scattering hmm. that determines... Sounds, the, the sounds about as accurate as carbon carbon dating to me. <laughs> 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 well, LiDAR technology these days is pretty interesting, man. It's that I would say that's probably oh, the most Doug, disruptive. Doug says the Catholic Church does not officially endorse or uh, reject or reject the shroud so of Turin as a relic. You seen thing. how many things they've found with LiDAR now? Yeah. What is it's LiDAR? It's insane. It's a type of underground radar. Yeah, it's underground, but also too like if you get dense forest areas, yeah, like, it'll show like you can like you fly uncover over. all all of these pyramids, like especially in in South America, they have found hundreds and hundreds of like ancient civilization discoveries. Yeah. yeah, because it's like 
you know, the forest just like over, it's overgrown. Like yeah. it's everywhere. You wouldn't even know it was there. Dude, I do. Are those cars in the ground right there? Yeah, ancient cars. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> you know, hey, I saw, you know, speaking of jungle, for the first time in my life, you know what I saw in, in real life in my backyard? I never seen a black widow in real life. Uh, we saw yeah, one. Yeah. Little bastard. On my it's kid's true. toy. Like my kid's we toy had one car. In our garage not too long ago. Bro, first of all, my, my wife's like, is that a black one? I'm like, I don't care if it is or isn't. That's a scary looking Kill spider. It. Kill it immediately. Yes. So I got the I chemical warfare, sprayed the shit out of it. But that was a big sucker, man, like this. Oh, it was all my kids, uh, like, you know, the ones that your kids go in and, and use their Did oh, it have the God. red uh, hourglass yeah. on yeah, it? Yeah, no, it was real. Yeah, yeah. It was oh, a legit, wow. yeah, Black Widow. Have you guys ever you don't want I've you know, seen you guys them, ever been I've bit by one? Oh, no, oh, I haven't been, been bit. bit. Not bit, thankfully. But so I, Jessica's brother was bit when he was a kid, and it left a na I mean, it, like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude. That, it their nasty. venom is nasty. Nasty sure. mark. Brown recluse way worse. It is? Yes. Now, will you die from a black widow? Do you have to get it treated, or does it just mess up your? I think your, it, your hand? You could. Uh, depends on your reaction to. I it, thought you could die. I thought it was. It's, I thought it was lethal. No? I, I, I'm sure it's it's bad for some people. I know brown recluse. Like I've known people have had maybe like a dumb arm sized amputated. person, but not like a Justin sized person. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's the qualifier. It'd kill, it'd kill, it'd kill a dog, but yeah. it probably just it's got enough venom at, for uh, for you know. I'm, I'm gonna lose like a, a few limbs, limit. but you know, yeah, my yeah. torso will make it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's what we see. Black Widow, spirit. okay, so they rarely kill healthy adults. Uh, but young children, see? That's why we got scared. Oh, yeah, less than 1%. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's well, little kids. Yeah, shit. Wow. I killed that yes. mm, little spider. Yeah. Uh, all right, here's the question. Yeah. Uh, so this hasn't passed, but it's going through California state legislature. <laughs> okay. So yeah. it's, it's moving through. Hasn't passed yet, but moving through. Okay. So I wanted to ask your opinion on what More you think this would do. brilliant policies God. by Gavin Newsom. I am yes, California. Go ahead. Oh, it's a uh, California thing, not a California, it's California thing. California thing. Should say everything. Okay. So that's why you got to take it with, you know, understand yeah, where yeah. it's coming from. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're going to, they're passing it through. It hasn't passed yet, but it's moving through. Zero percent mortgage loans or zero down mortgage loans, sorry, for illegal immigrants. Not U.S. citizens. No, no, no. If you're a legal immigrant, so you would qualify oh, yeah. for a zero down home loan. I mean, if you were, what would this do? So to the housing you're doing the right thing. You don't qualify. If I'm you sorry. were, if you were wondering where it would go, it would. It's going to run like crazy. I mean, we're already in a place right now, so I think we're going to run. Anyways. And I think it would not only make it run, but then we'd end up with a bunch of uh, short sales and bankruptcies afterwards. Potentially, yeah, potentially. Because they don't. I mean, get, that's what people don't realize about the 2008 crash. A lot of people got loans they shouldn't have gotten. Yeah. And that's why uh, that's why we weren't qualified to receive them. Yeah, yeah, we're we're already in an interesting uh, situation because the Fed's already came out and said that they're going to reduce rates. That's already coming, right? So rates are going to come down. Um, a lot of people that are investors have been waiting for the rates to get to soften in the first place. We're still in record low inventory almost everywhere in the country. So even though the market in the last year, people would say it's plateaued or it's corrected a little bit, it hasn't crashed. It's you know and people with their tight with their really low interest loans don't want to get out. Yeah, they're not. They're they're not going to move. If you're sitting at three percent in a in a great deal, you can't because you can't you can't flip sell and upgrade to another another. Even if place. it's cheaper, you're going to yeah, pay more. Yeah, yeah. So you're not. So you got that going on and low inventory. And then if all of a sudden you let a flood of people who really shouldn't buy homes or could, shouldn't be able to because they don't have the the money to be able to do it and you allow them to do it. Yeah, no, the inevitable will cause a a run, an even greater run on the mm. market. So uh, I again, I think we're heading that way anyways. Uh, I mean, there, I've been looking for us and myself for a while now. We, I mean, we cooled off on the real estate game mm -hmm. for a while. And I've been looking again because I do think that uh, I do think whatever happens post election is going to be a, is going to be another housing, which How sounds would, crazy. This, so this sounds wild to me because in order to qualify for a loan, you have to show like W two and stuff like that, right? But you're illegal, so you don't have that. So they're gonna, you're going to qualify for yeah. a zero down, and then how, how are you going to show your track them? record? How are you going to show them well, that you if can it's pay paid, it off? You because said the government, uh, I mean, where are they getting the funds for it? We. Yeah, right. Subsidize subsidizing exactly. Apparently, I mean, that's it. the only way I think it could work. Because what bank What bank would give this? Because yes. they're no, I'm not going to so do this. It's the only way they would, yeah, they would pass it. Is what a crazy. Now, it hasn't passed. It's going through. But most I, likely they won't. I mean, I hope not. That'd be such a crazy yeah, I don't, policy. I, I, it makes I, no sense. I don't, no, think, I don't think it would because of what uh, because of what happened in 08. I think that that, that would probably be the thing that... I, I mean, r my guess right now, this is just a, a ploy to get elected. That's just a, look what we're doing for you. 
you know, and that we're trying sure, to pass through. Sure, there's a lot of that. And that's, and, yeah, and this, this would, yeah, this would be the time to do it. For right? supposed He's non-voters, the right? He's the king of exactly, that. right? I mean, exactly. So well, imagine this. Yeah. Think so about this way. It's exactly, illegal who, you want, that's exactly who you want that's, to, you well, know. It's a federal crime. Think of it this way. I, if I live here and I have family somewhere and I'm like, I need to get a house, but I can't qualify. What would stop me from, oh, come over, but we're not going to go back home. Don't worry. And then when you're here, we'll use you to help me buy a house and we'll get it together and I'll make the payment. Like I could see a lot of loopholes on how people may take advantage of something like this. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I can't, I think it's just a way of, of posturing right now to get votes. Hopefully. Uh, and because I don't think that, because at the end of the day too, one, it's got to pass. And then two banks have to agree to it. So you could pass all the laws <laughs> yeah. you want, yeah. but you banks aren't going to take that risk. So maybe unless they, they're guaranteed by well, the state. Well, you're right. Unless they're guaranteed, which I don't know if they have that same kind of guarantee for that. And so mm. what would probably happen is well, sort she, of like student loans. She gets yeah. like a she gets something like that pass, but then it doesn't matter because no banks are willing to do it. There's a lot of things like that that have happened before where like there's a, you know, they they pass something or say something can be done, but then you also have the banks that have to agree to even want yeah, to do it. Yeah, so they're yeah. like, yeah, great, you can, but we're not going to. Yeah. Like, go go to the bank. Maybe down he the just road, not wants us. attention. Yeah. You know, he just wants to have his face on you know, social mm, media somewhere. Yeah. I'm due, you know, I'm due to catch up with uh, Chris Nagibi. I, like, I, he tends to be. I'd love my, to know his opinion. My, yeah, I know. My, me too, because he's he's in it the most as a, my friends, and and he has a really good balanced opinion. You know, like he's not. Mm -hmm. uh, even obviously, he's connected to a bank, so he has some sort of a bias. But he he does a good job of of communicating. I think on on, on both sides. I haven't talked to him in a while, so. It's weird, weird time, dude. Really, I mean, I told you guys the last time we talked about this a while back that you know the forty-year mortgage thing is going to be a thing for our kids. That's going to be so uh, crazy. Yeah, I, I really. So the the there was always this this idea that we were going to turn into this renters nation. I think it will feel like it's a renters nation because you're you're paying payments for the rest of your life practically, but you will own the home. I think that's how they'll sell it to, to people. Right. This just is finance the, way, the hell out of it. Yeah, just finance the hell out of it forever. Wow. And you know, technically the bank carries it, but then we make you feel what, like it's you a own weird your home. time. It's a weird time because current homeowners don't want house prices to drop because if they do, then they'll lose the value of their home. So you have this way, this weird incentives to continue to pump up and blow up an already bloated and inaccurate uh, pricing structure with homes. And politicians who want votes, you know, they're not going to come out and be like, hey, I'm going to pass legislation that's going to crash the price of, of your home. Um, we're going to do these other things to make it easier to buy them, which really just blows up the prices. And so, yeah, it's a weird time. Speaking, and it's, I mean, it's really, it's so weird. This is so weird to me. It's so weird. I never in a million years thought I would see a Kennedy support a Republican. Yeah. What? Yeah. Is going so did on? So did he officially back yes, Trump? Yes, that he says did. everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What What's is going right on? Now. Yeah. I mean, I mean, RFK. I, I respect him for doing that. I mean, he's. Sure. I mean, he's a Kennedy. You know, yeah. they 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 were. You know, he's he lost his uncle, and you know, people getting assassinated, and he's very against. Um, and he's got a history of this, like he fighting corruption and stuff for him to s go to the Republican side. Well, that's I, that I there's mean, something just, going just look on. Just how Democratic Party just muscled him out. There's something going on, man. I, I never in a million years would have thought this would something like this would happen. So crazy. To so me. now, I, I mean, you, you follow this morning. I'm not paying attention much. I did see the news on that. I didn't know if he had officially announced. Yeah, he did. He so did. he did. So he did. Oh, yeah. He did support. He's supporting Trump Watch now. his speech too. It was fired. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, it was fired. What was it at? Where did he, where did he, where, where did he, he have his speech? He was speaking in, uh, I don't know, it was in front of this huge crowd for, they were doing a, another like a Republican rally, I think. Mm -hmm. And he spoke, uh, and then announced it uh, in front of everybody. And it was, it was just, I, I wouldn't even do it justice to sum it up. It was very, very, like well crafted. Oh speech. wow! Yeah, oh, I like, wow. I like RFK from what I've heard, and I've heard him speak, and I like him. Yeah, I like um, him. I, I this is crazy. I never would have expected. Never in a million years. The fact that first he went independent, and I was like, whoa, that's crazy. But I kind of got it because of how they 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 really messed with them during this whole process, but then for him to, to, I mean, to drop out and then support the Republican candidate. Mm -hmm. What? I know this, this is the times we're in now. It's and like, you know, they took away secret service. Mm -hmm. I did hear immediately. That. I did hear that, which was like, what are you guys trying to do? Like, this is terrible. Now what's probably going to happen is he's going to have to stick next to Trump the whole time. 
if he's smart, which only makes it like he's going to campaign even more for him now. I don't know. It was a weird, weird time. I over, I overheard, uh, not overheard. I heard a uh, interview that was with Trump too that he's talking about Elon being in the co- cabinet. Is well, that like a real possibility? Oh, that was during the interview they did with him, right? Yeah, I mean, that, that, they were considering what, what was the uh, it actually He's had government the, efficiency for his, a, for his AI, right? For AI, that's why he Department for, of uh, Government Efficiency. Efficiency, yeah, Doge. His uh, job would literally be to look at government agencies and be like, which, "This is not efficient." Why have really, we, we? Why have we not had that? Like <laughs> that's a lot on. of jobs that are going to get chopped, dude. If that's dude, case, <laughs> yes. I mean, I, run it like a, a successful business, like you've always said. I mean, it's like, what are we doing? We're, there's yeah. no accountability or oversight of like how we're just frivolously spending everywhere. Yeah, have somebody manage it better. I've always I, that, that's never made sense to me. Why people? That's why we don't. You're going to have these trillion dollar accounting errors. You know, like yeah. that's, that's it's. Ah, oh, that makes, makes me no so sense. pissed. Like I like, can't believe it. Can you imagine that like, you being a company. Yeah. Yeah. You go to your everything your you say is irrelevant. Just show, go get me that trillion like, dollars. I don't know. We're missing a few hundred thousand yeah. dollars or or a few million yeah. dollars. Yeah. 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 Little tr- everything else is literally just <laughs> mah, 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 like white noise, dude. Go get me that trillion dollars. And they're laughing the whole time. Oh, God, I don't know. Dude. Weird times. So bad. so bad. We got a shout out. Yeah. Do your. Uh, why don't you? Do yeah, your- I want to do Kula Sports yeah. uh, and uh, performance. I think th- what's his handle? Kula Sports Performance. But um, yeah, I just want you guys to go check it out. If you're in the Denver area, you gotta you gotta hit up that gym. It's it's immaculate. It, you, it's amazing, especially if you have any kids too that are you know trying to improve their uh, their speed. I'm trying to convince him, and he does have some camps, but I'm trying to convince him to I'm gonna bring my kids and and run them through like a week uh, camp of like, you know, getting, working on their speed. And I think that would be insanely valuable. So that's something down the road. I really want to see if we can, you know, align with. Look, here's a fact. You're not what you eat. You're actually what you digest and absorb. There's a company called Masszymes that makes digestive enzymes that help break down your proteins, fats, and carbs. A lot of people don't know this. As you age, your body produces less and less of these natural uh, enzymes that break these things down. So you may notice some digestional issues, especially if you eat a high protein diet. Well, masszymes with your meals helps break down those proteins, fats, and carbs into usable forms that you can absorb and utilize. So you can recover better. You get less inflammation, less bloat, less gut issues. Go check them out. Go to buyoptimizers.com. That's B-I-O-P-T-I-M-I-Z-E-R-S.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 for 10% off your order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Paige from Idaho. Hi, Paige. How can we help you? Good morning. Hi, guys. Thanks for taking my question. Um, So I'm 40. I have about 50 pounds to lose. Um, So I started a low dose of semaglutide about three weeks ago. Um, Just a little bit of background. I um, have struggled with my weight my whole life, but um, I'm really at the heaviest I've been since I had my son 17 years ago. Um, I kind of threw up my hands and decided I'm just going to try it. Um, so I'm doing, um, 20 minutes of body weight exercises per week or four times a week. Um, I'm walking about an hour a day. I do Pio at the gym and I've only lost one pound in three weeks. And I feel like I should be losing more and it's working. I feel the appetite suppression, but I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. You're not, well, okay. Your workouts aren't good. We'll talk about that in a second, but, uh, you're not really doing anything wrong in a three week period. There's a, it does take time to, for many people, for, uh, GLP ones to start to kind of build up and and show effect. Um, without tracking your, your intake, it's hard to say how much lower it is versus what, what you were doing before, but I can give you advice on how to maximize the benefits or, or the effects of the, of the GLP one and minimize some of the negatives, um, which I think is is more appropriate because you're only three weeks in. Do you mind if I continue? Yeah, that's great. So uh, so if you just take what you were eating before and then you're just eating less because of reduced appetite, you will lose weight, but a significant percentage of that will be coming from muscle. Now, it's not because what you're taking is anti-muscle. In fact, GLP-1s are probably a bit muscle-preserving, but rather you're just cutting your calories. Um, and when you just cut your calories, your body tries to meet the new caloric intake by lowering its metabolic rate. And one of the best ways to do that is by paring muscle down. So what we want to do is offset that or try to mitigate that as much as possible as you're on this uh, journey. So it's a very good idea to aim for your target body weight and protein. That's very muscle preserving. 
And let's also change your workouts. Your workouts aren't very, you know, pro metabolism, pro muscle. What you're doing is a lot of kind of cardio type stuff. Nothing necessarily wrong with that, but it doesn't really do much uh, in the case of muscle preservation or or metabolism uh, preservation. I'd like to see you do uh, strength training, traditional strength training twice a week. And then the rest of the week, you could just continue doing your walking. Hit your target body weight and protein, and you're going to do just fine. I mean, that first three-week period, um, and I, I know in your email, you said you 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 doubled the units that you were using. You went from, from 25 to 50. It can be a, a two- or three-month period before somebody finds uh, the right dose. Uh, going too high can cause really, really crushed appetite, maybe even nausea in some people. And then a too low dose, you might not notice uh, much of a, an appetite uh, effect whatsoever. So you're just in those beginning stages. Um, so I would say hold tight, but definitely change the workout to what I said and definitely really start to hit your target body weight in grams of protein from whole foods. If you just do those two things in combination with what you're taking – you, your high odds are you're going to get great success. Paige, any idea what you were eating calorie wise before and after? Do you do you have an idea? Have you ever tracked? I don't like tracking. Um, yeah. So no, I just know I'm eating a lot less. Okay. Is that like you like are missing a whole meal, or is it portion size you notice? Like, what is it you notice? Um, How do you know? Probably you're... both. Okay. And it seems like what's give me a can you tell me what you ate yesterday? Like give me a, give me an idea. I just want to get an idea how how off we could be really off on protein. We could be really off on calories. I'm just curious to like where you're currently at. So I ate. I probably didn't eat till noon yesterday. Okay. And I had um, probably like five eggs and some toast, and then um, I had some steak for dinner. Um, I also think. I think I had a hamburger too, like in between those two. Oh, okay. Okay. What's so your, I'm eating three ish meals a day. What's your target body weight? Good protein meals, though. That's it. Um, I do eat a lot of meat. Um, I'm five seven, so the best I looked, I was 160 pounds. Okay, so I think if we hit 130 grams of protein a day or so, I think we'd be perfectly fine. I mean, um, she may also be she may, she might be getting pretty. I mean, her those three meals that she said were are going to be pretty decent right. protein wise. Right. What we might be seeing right now too, with only a one pound loss, is actually could possibly a good thing. I do think the adjustment to the workout program, the suggestion Sal gave, yeah. is the way to go for sure. But you actually might be doing it a lot better than you think you're doing. Well, it's hard so, to say it's three weeks. I know. What's well, I mean yeah. for three weeks and to only see one pound go on the scale, and she could be hanging on to muscle. She could be hanging on to it and actually just losing body fat just slowly. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, the only adjustment then, because the diet sound that if you eat like that, that's that's a good choice. Those are good choices. That's a, a high protein meals, uh, and getting at least three of them in the day. Good choices of meals too. Uh, I think that's pretty good there. And you might just be, you might not have been that high of calorie before. And so it's just a slight reduction in calories and, you know, it's going to take some time to do it. Do you feel, are you measuring anything? Are you taking body fat? Have you done circumference? Are you doing anything to track other than just weight? Or are you only using the scale? No, just the scale. So I would recommend at least doing like a circumference measurement around your waist beside, because the scale can be very deceiving for this exact reason of this conversation right now. Like uh, you might, if you were, if you were my client, and just because the scale didn't move and this was what was going on food wise, let's let's pretend we had a little bit better lifting program. I might just say, hey, stay the course. You're doing really good. Just give it some more time. Uh, but with only going off the scale and assuming that you're not doing good, it's it's hard to say. So I, I, I'd recommend start start doing that for sure is is measuring circumference or body fat would be yeah. even better if you could do that. But, you know, but, but for sure, there's there's almost nothing we can tell in a three week period in terms of you know, if something's in three weeks, what you would look at is how you felt, you know, do you feel good? Um, this would be whether I, if I trained a client, for example, I wouldn't look at three weeks and be able to determine success or failure yet. Uh, not even close. It would just be like, are you stronger? Do you feel better? Um, those are the metrics you'd be looking at at this point, but let, let's change your workout. Uh, do you have access to a gym or do you work out at home? I work out at home and I did just get maps 15. Oh, so that's perfect. That's, that's that. perfect. Yes. That's perfect. That's it. Follow yeah. maps 15 and do the walking, hit your, your target body weight and protein. That's the only thing you should track. And you're going to be fine. You'll yeah. be absolutely fine. Paige, I'm going to have, are you, you're not in our private forum, are you? 
No. Okay, I'm going to have Doug put you in our private forum, and so you can check back with us. So I, I, I agree with Sal. You go into Map 15, that's actually was what I was going to recommend. So the fact that you bought that's great. So Perfect. go Map 15. I think your eating is good where you're at. Follow the advice he's given you, and then just check back with us once a month. Let us kind of give us an update on how you feel. I would recommend, though, if either the body fat test or at least the circumference. That way you don't – because honestly, if you do a good job of lifting – and we may maintain, maybe we can get lucky with a switching of a better program. You might even build a little bit of muscle. So I don't want to get hung up on the scale, not moving much because you could be changing your body composition and doing a really good job. So at least, at least get me the circumference measurements and let me know. And then obviously uh, uh, tracking how you feel and then check in with us once a month. Okay, cool. Thank All you. All right. Yeah, you Paige. got it. All right. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. Yeah. I, th I mean, you can't tell anything for three weeks. No, yeah, it's like, like you're, I mean, we've all had those clients, right? They'll train with you, and after <clears throat> three weeks, I'm not seeing any progress. <laughs> yeah, you're just getting yeah. started. Okay, you know, give it a second. You I mean, this is trends established. This is also the challenge when you don't track anything, too. Well, I, know. I mean, that makes it really That's difficult. Really like, you, you, you're, we're not tracking food. We're also not tracking body fat percentage. The only thing we're going off of is the scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also, this is also one of the challenges that you're going to have with the GLP ones. I think people hear all about them. Oh my gosh, they do this, they do that, they, whatever. Then they go on it and they're like, why didn't anything change since yesterday? Like, yeah. why isn't this happening so fast? I heard that this is such a, and even in the, in, even in the data, I mean, it takes, you know, it, it's, it starts to work, but there's a, there's a process of finding the right dose for you that can take a month. You know, some cases, two months. Well, also keep this in mind. You're going to have that, that group of people, a lot of people that have already yo-yo dieted a lot in their life right. and have a very slow metabolism. And even though they're in, in their eyes or their perspective, they're eating significantly less, say even half, half to them is going from, you know, say 1,500 calories yeah. to 750 calories. Yeah. So, you know, that the, the reduction in calories for that person in, in the context of where they're currently at is not this huge thing that they're going to... Now, obviously, if you take somebody who eats six, five times a day and it's fast food and they consume four or 5,000 calories a day and then all of a sudden they take this crushing... That's where we see the drastic changes. Yes, and yeah, then you... Not they, here. Yeah, and then you see somebody get on semi-glutide, they eat 1,500 calories now. Well, yeah, that person plummets and they lose weight every single week, but... Then they hit a hard plateau. Yeah, you're right. So, I mean, this is... Uh, that's why the scale is dangerous to just go based off of that. But her, what she said she ate, I mean, I was not expecting that. That's I also know. one day. We don't know what she was sure. eating before. Yeah. Sure, you know... We don't know if she's just trying to impress us. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. She's like, let me pick the three. You ever had a client that, that comes to you like, I don't you know, no, no, let me tell you what I ate yesterday. It's like they picked the day that yeah, was, yeah, the, the <laughs> best. Yeah, everything was measured yeah, perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So our next caller is Tina from Michigan. Hi, Tina. How can we help hello, you? Hello. Hi. How you doing? What's going on? Good. How are you guys? We're good. good. Okay. So first thing is I found your guys' podcast. Someone told me to listen to like last year, maybe end of last year. And I started from the beginning. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> and you're still here. We, we like you God, so awesome. much. It gets way better. <laughs> so I'm almost, I want to say I probably listened to like the first 400 before skipping around. And now I'm somewhere in like the 700s. Oh, wow. And to be honest, actually like 2024, you guys, I don't know that well. 2018, <laughs> we're like this. <laughs> wow. Uh, wow. All right. Old us. <laughs> hey, I, um, I promise it does get better. Yeah. <laughs> well, so it's funny. So I didn't know that you guys did these Q and A's like this until I like skipped around and listened to some of the recent ones. So I wrote in last week and I was like, Oh my God. Oh, that's Anyhow, awesome. awesome. Out of all of my times listening, I have not heard you guys give any advice on how to do a book for a good lady. I have been trying forever. And I think that my, I think I'm missing connections here through how to engage my lats. I think I'm trying to use too much arms and I can't get it. Okay. So I, I see in your email too, you're pretty strong and you are a personal trainer. So this is your space. You, you train people, you work out Correct. pretty consistently. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so can you, can you say the question again? I actually didn't yeah, pull up. A, a, oh, I thought you said bulk. No, I thought no, no. she said yeah. bulk too. I totally didn't. Uh, yeah, no, no, she wants to be able to do a you. pull up. Oh, okay. oh yes, yeah. So yes, I was yes, confused. Yes. I was like, yeah. what are we so, talking about? We have that. First off, pull ups are hard, uh, yeah. especially if you're not, you know, a 90 pound individual. It's a it's a tough um, exercise to do for both men and women. But with any exercise, if you want to get better at it, especially body weight exercises, 
practicing them often is the best way to do it. Now, the challenge, of course, is, well, I can't do a pull-up. How do I practice it? Um, right. What you want to do is you want to practice weight-assisted pull-ups on a daily basis at, at a moderate intensity, not a high intensity. So okay. one way to do this, how often are you in the gym? Or do you have a pull-up bar? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm working there three days a week. I'm actually running anabolic right now, so I'm only lifting two days a week. Okay. So you can get yourself a pull-up bar for your house. You can put it in your doorway and put okay. a, a really strong band around it that can do, so you can do an assisted pull-up and yep. get, get a band that's strong enough to allow you to do like one or two where you're not super struggling. So in other words, if you wanted to, you could do four, but one, okay. or two, so one or two would be moderate intensity. And then you just, okay. and then you just practice it like three, four times a day. At least. That's it. Yeah. You walk by it, you do okay. like one or two, yeah. one or two, and it's kind of moderate intensity. It's not super easy, but it's definitely not like your max. And you just practice okay. it. You just practice it on a, on a regular basis and you'll find your strength start to come up. And so when that becomes really easy, then you make it a little bit more challenging. So it's moderate again and little by little, so you'll get stronger. I've done this with like the neutral grip. And I can get up onto the neutral grip where I find that I struggle so I can get up all the way and I can get halfway down. But no matter what I do, I can't get that like full rep and yeah. then pull myself back up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you have a weight, if you have a band, a really strong band around the just pull-up keep bar. Keep doing, just keep reducing that. Yeah, yes. Correct. Yes. That's it. Yes. So you want to practice some uh, with a, with a resistance that allows you to perform a perfect rep with moderate intensity. So don't okay. think of it as a workout. What I don't want you to do is go like, oh, grind out a pull-up no. four times a day. You're going to go out okay. and, and do one that's you know kind of hard, but you could do three more if you wanted to. And you just practice it. Okay. You just practice it every single day, several times a day. Maybe take a day off here or there. And then little by little, increase the resistance. And you'll find yourself be able to do a pull-up in no time. Does the gym, by the gym that you uh, work at, does it have one of those Gravitron machines by chance? Does it have one the, of those? Yeah, we've had ones? an assisted one too. Oh, okay. So I was doing them more frequently. And then when I started running anabolic, I kind of like tapered off doing those more frequently because I didn't know if it was going to interfere. So Still just kind of like do it just lower intensity yeah, and that's how it won't interfere. Yep. If you, if you keep it at moderate intensity, it's not going to interfere. If you train it to failure, when you get up on there, then it is going to interfere. Yeah, It's so, not a workout. Yeah. Literally I would set the Gravitron machine. Okay. I would put it to where I could do, you could do five of that. So whatever weight assisted, so you could do five full range all the way down, all the way sure. up five reps. But then I only get, I want you to do two. That's it. You get up, boom, okay. boom, do two, and then go do your thing. Come back in an hour or two, boom, do two more again. Do your thing, go back, come back in an hour or two, yeah. do two like more. Like three, four times a day. Yes. The only, yeah, the only like added thing that I would say, uh, and this is when I was like going through a lot of like Olympic uh, ring training uh, that we went through was, you know, more core training specifically, like, uh, so say like a hollow body position, not. I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but to, to work on that to where you can connect all the way from your fingertips to your toes and stay tense. Uh, and what okay. that's going to do is keep you, uh, you know, from wavering at all. And so that way you're going to have a lot more effective, uh, your technique is going to be so much better when you go to pull up, uh, to where you keep your body super rigid and tight and controlled. Uh, you're going to have a lot better chance of like performing, uh, and getting more reps out yeah. of it. So, but at the, at the end of the day, if you practice, you know, five, six days a week, like we're saying, what you'll find is you'll gradually start to get stronger and it's the most effective way that I've ever seen for anybody to be able to perform a pull-up or for that matter, get stronger fast in any exercise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then on the days of, um, cause I'm in phase two of anabolic right now where one of the exercises is doing, you know, two sets of pull-ups. Um, should I do those like two a big intensity or yeah. should I do those ones lighter as well? No, that's a workout. Like when no, I'm yeah. doing an extra no, you still, lifting day? No, you still yeah. follow the workout. I would do those as a workout and that should be your gauge uh, and you should notice you're getting stronger. So if we do this correctly, when you get to your workout days and you actually are challenging yourself, you'll be like, oh, I'm stronger. You should notice like, yeah. oh, wow, I'm getting another rep out or, oh, this is getting easier. So if we do a good job okay. of moderate intensity frequently throughout the week, when you get to the workout days where you actually are supposed to challenge yourself on the workout or on the pull up, you should actually see that and give it a couple of weeks of, of being consistent yeah, with it. And then you should notice already a difference from that alone. 
Okay. That sounds doable, actionable. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Tina, you, now, since you are listening far back, are, did you know that we have like a, a whole like business coaching for trainers and stuff like that and a page dedicated to trainers? Do you, okay. Yes. So, so the funny thing, so I just, every once in a while, I'll see something on the social medias that I'll be like, oh, I didn't know that happened. Like, I didn't know you had a kid and got married. So then I'll like <laughs> fast forward and like look through. Um, and then I was just talking to, I don't know if her name's Anne Marie yep. about the fitness coaching program that you guys just closed. Yes. Um, and I was going to sign up, but it does not count as like a continuing ed. Is that correct? It doesn't. Or like it my doesn't, NASM? Yeah, it doesn't yet. That's one of the things that we're talking about working on is getting to where it'd be continuing education. Yep. So I was going to just try to knock something of that out real quick and then kind of recircle back to the Got fitness it. coach thing. Good. Well, cool. you're at least following the Instagram page and you at least are paying. I just want to make sure that you know, because we did that way later. So I wasn't sure if you got to it yet. <laughs> Every once in a while, I find something new and then I have to go and check it out. But okay. I didn't want to like skip through all the good stuff all the way up. I've yeah. learned a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. All awesome. right. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you guys so much. You got right, it, Tina. Right, good luck. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. If somebody likes us from back then, they really like us. It's true. Because yeah, it was hard. Because it was rough. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a rough go in the beginning. <laughs> you were raw. Definitely. And Doug, can you make sure you Unbridled. send her the links to, to all the like the Facebook pages for the trainers and yeah. some of that? Make sure she has all that content. Yeah. You know, this whole practice though concept with uh, with specific exercises. I mean, the the the, the Soviets were really good at this with yeah. their Olympic lifters. And um, I mean, I I, I tell the story. Uh, you know, I've told the story before, but. I had a trainer and I would watch him do this in between clients. He'd go and bench. And he was one of the strongest bench pressers I'd ever seen, especially at his body weight. Mm -hmm. But he wouldn't go out and practice with his max. He'd go out with a weight that was <clears throat> sub max. And he'd do a few reps and rack it up. And I thought, what does he do? Is, just, is he bored? Yeah. Is he just, well, he's just bored. Yeah. And um, when I asked him about it, he goes, that's how I got such a, a good bench. He's like, I just started doing that. Yeah, wait till he maxes out. Yeah. yeah it'll blow your mind. It's, it's so funny because the way I figured this out too was, it, but mine wasn't intentional. I wasn't like out trying to do it. I worked at the ranch and in where the barn was at, there was this, this bar that was just above me. It was like perfect. Just hop up a tiny bit. And as a kid, where I had to pass that bar at mm -hmm. least 30, 40 times a, a work a day, work day. Just back and forth, like every few times, I'll hop up there, do a couple, and then I just used just to mess around, around. just yeah. messing around, yeah. not even like trying to intentionally get after mm -hmm. it or get better at it. And I just realized over time, like, holy shit, I got really good at this. This yeah. is this is why this is one of the 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 I guess the impetus that that helped me come up with the trigger session is I noticed mm -hmm. like the, the the strong grip that my dad and his coworkers had. They wore blue collar and nobody Continuous trained Continuous exposure. Yeah, they That's never trained their grip to failure. They were just constantly working on hands. And they had some of the strongest grips I'd ever been, be, uh, you know, I was ever yeah. around. So, hey, real quick, sorry to interrupt you. Look, we have a sale this month on some programs. We have a beginner program, Map Starter. It's 50% off. Then we have a bundle that's different. It's called the Starter Bundle that includes our most popular programs. That's also 50% off. So, if you're interested in that, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Our next caller is Sharon from New Hampshire. Hi, Sharon. How can we help you? Hi. How are you? Hey, I'm more excited. Of course, my dog is going to start barking right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I'll just read the question Okay. so I don't get distracted. Um, I'm 38. I started being active around 25, and I'm one of those crazy people who actually likes cardio. So I've done like five marathons, maybe 20 half marathons. I love yoga. I like to switch it up. Um, but for the last couple of years, I've been really focused on gaining muscle and strength just so I can have that strong, lean aesthetic. The last three years, I've been gaining weight. I'm not super overweight, but just soft. Oh, sorry, soft. Um, and I've made some significant changes with diet, um, even with that focus on weight training versus cardio. Um, I'm just not getting back to where I feel confident and lean. So I do want to note, I've had a lot of changes over the last like year and a half. So I was di uh, diagnosed with hypothyroid. This was just upgraded to Hashimoto's. Um, but aside from that, I've also changed from being vegetarian for 15 years. So I eat meat now. That's helped heal some of my uh, stomach problems that I had. I think that was, I don't know, synced up with the Hashimoto's. Um, I have laid off the running. I've been focusing more on walking and prioritizing lifting. Um, so I had to relearn how to eat with meat, which sounds silly, but it was very different building meals when I'm eating meat. It's just way easier to smash the protein when I have steak or chicken. 
Um, but now I'm confused more about how I should be having like a whole meal, like not just the protein, right? Like what am I, what should I be doing for carbs and fat? I want to have a balance. I want to be able to be flexible if I go to a party or, you know, just go out for like a date night. Um, I don't go out a ton. We go out to eat maybe once a week, but I'm just really fed up with <laughs> feeling like crap. Nothing I'm doing is really getting me to where I want to be. I've put in a lot of time and effort and I'm just not seeing the results that I had seen and I'm feeling good for so long. Um, so yeah, I just came to you guys. So to summarize a couple questions, is it possible to get back to running and be strong and lean? Um, if I'm eating more than one gram of protein per pound for body weight, is that okay? Is that going to have a negative impact um, on losing fat or is that going to make me loaded? Um, and I'm 5'1", I'm around 122 pounds. I'm just wondering what I should be looking at for for macros overall. Just, I know it's a lot. I appreciate having uh, you guys having me on. I'm like super excited. No, great, great questions. Uh, well, first I want to know about lifting. I want to know about the lifting routine. Yeah, well, well, let's get in that. We'll get in that for a second. Okay. But I need to. Ask, so you said Hashimoto's. Are you getting? Are you taking thyroid? Is it balanced now? Or are you on medication? Um, yeah, I'm on medication. It actually just got upped, so my energy's been feeling a lot better uh, the last two months. Okay. So that yeah, that's been. Okay. Great. And do you work with a functional medicine practitioner or uh, just your regular doctor? No, I have a holistic like naturopath. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. And then um, with your with your strength training, um, since you started strength training, are you stronger? Are you a lot stronger? How different uh, are, do you feel in the gym? Yeah. So I used to do CrossFit. That's like where I first got into lifting weights. I know you guys okay. don't love that. Um, yeah. But... I started doing your MAP program aesthetics um, and I saw improvement. I have got stronger. I know I shouldn't be focused on, I don't know, feeling lean and all that, but it's just hard to be doing so much for so long. Um, but right now I'm doing the aesthetics program. So I'm okay. in, I just finished phase two. Okay. So funny that the, that we, we talk about this off air all the time that the, the people that we always have to modify their volume and intensity of training and what they've been doing, i.e. running CrossFit. So that always gravitate to the highest volume, the right? highest volume program that we created. Like it's the, of everything that we have, it's like the, the one program that we like caution people. It's like, it was really designed based off of the way I was training for a competition to get ready for, to compete on stage and so the level of uh, intensity and volume in that program is too high for most people. Yeah. So just so, just so you know, Sharon, if, if I were to follow Maps Aesthetic right now, um, it would probably overtrain me. So it's a lot of volume. So it's probably too much. It's probably inappropriate. So I would back that way down. I would do something like Maps Anabolic, or Maps Strong, or Maps Symmetry, and that is going to start to uh, you'll you'll see more strength gains uh, with that. Now your question around protein uh, no there's nothing wrong with eating more than one gram of protein per pound of body weight um in, in terms of fat loss that really break comes down to calories in versus calories out and a high protein is more likely to preserve or spare muscle it's more likely to cause pure fat loss uh, in, in terms of as, as a percentage of your calories so i would keep going that direction fat you typically don't need to work out uh work, focus on if your protein sources are not like you know yeah. skinless boiled chicken breast or something like that or tilapia <clears throat> where are you getting your protein from yeah i'm primarily i'm like total opposite of where i was so i pretty much eat steak like three meals a day oh, yeah, just because it's made yeah. me feel a lot, lot better yeah um great. so it's like yeah, sirloin ground beef sometimes i would yeah i wouldn't yeah. worry about your fat intake you're, um, you're good from that Carbs, I would go, I would base it off of energy and yeah. really the, the best source. digest. That's it. That's yeah. the best source of carbs for you is the ones that you would digest the easiest. So the ones that just make you feel good. That Fruits, you get bloated vegetables, from, rice, those type of meals. They tend type. to be. Yeah. Those tend to be the easiest to digest. Your body weight and your height is not bad at all. Do you know what body fat percentage you're at? I would get a body fat percentage test just so you can see where you're at. Now, most women, when they say they want a lean or aesthetic look, are typically satisfied around 20%. So, you know, 18 to 21% is typically where women are like, yeah, I'm happy. I'm lean. Uh, you know, I've, I've got, you know, good muscle definition. You're not shredded. 
it's easy to it's it's relatively easy to maintain with consistency. Um, and most women don't like being above 26, 27%. That's where, where you start to get complaints in terms of aesthetic, but everybody's different. So I would get a body fat percentage test so you could see where you're at. And that'll give you more, more of an accurate way to measure yourself as you continue doing this because your, your body weight, this, this is why I'm saying this, your body weight is great for your height. So if you did these, if you did everything right, your body weight might not actually change at all your body fat percentage may go up and your muscle might go up. Sorry, body fat percentage will go down and muscle go up. I'm also curious to, because uh, I know you said that a lot has changed over the last 15 months. I'm assuming that you probably like the first, the thyroid thing and then the diet and then the, tra like uh, how long have you not been running and how long have you been strength training focused and then also eating me the same time? Like, has it been 15 months or is it over You know, the course of those 15 months you've changed all those things? Yeah, it's been over the course. So at first it was the thyroid, right? And then getting on medications and then like six months in um, switching to me. And that was a slow progression just because it was like I had to wrap my brain around it. It was yeah, sure. a lot. Um, sure. And then this year, actually even end of last year, like fall last year, pulled in on the running, just really focused on lifting. I was doing like four or five days a week in the gym just because that's like, I'm not really sure what else I'm supposed to do with my time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's been a slow progression okay. of just, that just figuring out. This helps too, because it's, it's really only been about six months then or so that you've been like no running, eating meat, high protein consistently. And like, so, you know, a lot can happen now. And, and I think scaling back, I think maybe you've been, we're probably overdoing it a little bit as far as the training program. I think switching, like keeping the diet the way you are and switching over to like a MAPS anabolic type of protocol, I think you're going to start to notice a change and, and, and really see a lot. And you're already at a pretty good weight. So the thing that you're not going to see is a major swing on the scale, north or south. We wouldn't want that anyways. I'd want you to probably kind of hover around the weight. You're in a, you're in a healthy weight place. All I'd want to see is you, I would hear, want to hear from you. You're getting stronger in the gym. I'd want to hear that your lifts That's the metric that are I would doing measure. good and you're, you're letting me know like, oh, Adam, we added another five pounds to my squat. Like, okay, awesome. You're doing great. And you're going to get that aesthetic look that you're, you're looking for just from consistently doing that. Yeah. Keep in mind, like the, the strength, if it goes up consistently, that's also a, a correlated to your metabolic rate. So as your strength goes up, your your you start to build muscle, your metabolism starts to move up. Now that now you're moving into a calorie deficit because your metabolism is moving in a positive direction. So then you start to burn body fat. And and like again, your the weight on the scale might not change. It might change a little bit, but your composition is going to change. So the body fat test is going to is going to help you measure that. And I would do that every 2 weeks. And really the best metric is going to be your strength. Like if you're working out and you're adding no weight to the bar over the course of a month or two, especially because you've really only been lifting this way for six months, you should see some pretty good consistent strength gains on a almost weekly basis. Like every two or three weeks, you should see the, the weight go up on key lifts. And if it's not, it, the programming might be off. And MAPS aesthetic okay. is almost always too much volume for people. It almost always is. Of course. Okay. Yeah. I was like, ooh, that looks like a fun one. I want to <laughs> <course>. do that. <laughs> of course. So I, we're going to have yeah. Doug, we'll have Doug send over MAPS Anabolic to you. Follow that. So Follow your workouts are going to be okay. shorter. It's going to be less volume. Mm -hmm. Don't double guess it. Just be like, okay, I'm going to trust this. Um, remember with strength training, it's all about sending the signal and it's all about balancing recovery and adaptation with the signal that you sent in the gym. If those things are not balanced, then you'll just, what'll happen is you'll just, you'll get sore and you'll, soreness will go away. You go back to the gym, you get sore, soreness goes away and you won't progress. You'll just stay in the same place. And if you want to do more, go for a walk and listen to the podcast. That's what you do outside of this. So follow the program yeah. as it's laid out. You got extra time. You you're, you want to do something, go for a walk, put the podcast in. Totally. Okay. Can I ask one kind of follow-up question? Yeah, sure. Go of for course. it. So uh, first of all, I do listen to your podcast while I walk. Awesome. <laughs> Second, um, I... I play softball. It's a co-ed league. We're just there for a good time, but I have been trying to do just be faster. So like once a week I'd do sprints for cool. like four, maybe five rounds, like 30 seconds on 30 seconds off just so I can make it to first, you know? Yeah. Um, do you think, can that be like incorporated in there? Is that going to yeah. negatively impact anything? No, no. Spr sprinting is the strength training of cardio. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. yeah. So and now remember when you practice sprinting, 
you're trying to get faster. So when you practice them, treat them like sets in the gym. Yeah. Not Every like you want not like trying to fatigue yourself, but rather run as fast as you can for whatever the distance is. In rest for a couple distance. minutes. Rest yeah. until you feel like I can run fast again, and then do it again. Don't like sprint. Wait ten seconds. Sprint. Wait ten seconds. Because then it's just you know stamina building, which is okay if that's what you want. We have that structured in Maps uh, Performance Advanced, and it's pretty much in your off days where you're focused on your skill training, and it's very much like low to moderate intensity, but it's it's you're sharpening that skill. Like so, Sal saying it's. You want to make sure you're not fatigued. Fatigue is your enemy when you're working on your skill. Uh, so just everything intentional. Uh, and two, mobility is a big part of that to get your your body to move, you know, with fluidity and also support. So uh, maintaining a good mobility practice is going to be crucial for you to move well. Yeah, there, there, there's do nothing wrong with following MAPS Anabolic and doing, you know, two days a week of sprinting yeah. for 15 minutes total, grand total time. There'd be nothing wrong with that at all. It, it, honestly, it sounds like you're yeah, kind of doing something. Session. It, it yeah. sounds like this, right? So it would be four or five sprints, you know, that's it. And then with two to three minute rest periods in between. And you can do that two times a week and you'll improve your you'll you'll improve your speed. Totally. Um, and that won't that won't impede your progress. Yeah, and it, and as you get your as your squat strength goes up, which it will with MAPS anabolic, your squat is gonna go up. So is your deadlift. But as your squat goes up and you're simultaneously kind of practicing your sprinting, you're gonna get faster. You'll get a lot faster. Awesome. No, oh, I'm so excited. All right. Yes. Thank you guys. Circle I appreciate back in the a, time. Circle back in about a month. Let us know how things are going, Sharon. All right. Oh, you know, yeah, I will for sure. Real quick, Sharon, if you don't mind me asking, what what was the yeah. m the final thing that made you switch from vegan to eating meat? Was it the hypothyroidism uh, uh, diagnosis? I, um, I yeah, I had a ton of stomach issues, kind of in conjunction with the hypothyroid, and I had already cut out so many foods, which is what brought me to the doctor. I was like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be eating anymore. And then once I got the hypothyroid diagnose, I, diagnosis, I was just doing a lot of research and meat is more easily digestible. It's supposed yeah. to be better yep. for organ functioning. So I was like, okay, it's time. I tried. Good for you. Yeah. Good, yeah, good, good for, for you. you. Yeah. And I'm, I'm assuming they're telling you to avoid gluten at all. Uh, uh, totally. Right. Yeah. So that was the other thing I cut out eggs, gluten, and dairy. That's been in the last four months. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. All I'm right. just trial and error here. You're on the right track. Yep. Thank you. You're going to do great. Thank on you so anabolic. much. You yep. got it. All right, Sharon. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Alrighty. Yeah, so um, this is more common. This is anecdotally, but when you talk to functional medicine practitioners, this is more common with uh, vegetarians and vegans. Um, you know, hypo the Hashimoto's is your body's developed antibodies. Um, it's an autoimmune yeah. it's response. It's very overreactive. And, and, and you know, vegan-type foods – we tend to be more reactive to. This is why the ultimate elimination diet, when you're trying to figure things out, is, is just a carnivore diet. I'm not saying that's the diet people should be on, but if they're taking everything out, typically the least reactive food is meat, mm -hmm. is red meat. The most reactive foods tend to be plants, um, and you know, uh, gluten in particular for people with thyroid issues. So I asked her that. Mm -hmm. Our next caller is Cody from California. What's up, Cody? What's up, dude? How can we help Hello. you? Hello. Hello. Oh my god, this is so cool. Hello. <laughs> kind of nervous, but I'm definitely not as nervous as Justin. I get to see him. <laughs> he's, he's definitely like definitely nervous, so I can tell. But, I'm very okay. nervous. Yeah, <laughs> shaken. Okay, in fact. Okay. okay, 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 okay. Um, so my question, I'm just gonna read off the email, and make it easier. Uh, my name's Cody. I'm 17 years old. I've been lifting consistently for over three years, and my main goal for lifting is to build muscle and strength while preventing injury and maintaining good mobility. And a few months ago, I noticed an imbalance between my traps. My left trap was like just a little bit bigger than the right. And so I decided to switch to mostly like unilateral dumbbell training, like you guys talk about, which has been going really good so far and I've been getting stronger, but the imbalance has not gone away. After starting this phase, I noticed that the imbalance to my traps was not caused by the left being stronger necessarily, but rather that the rotator cuff is way weaker on my left than on my right. And it only seems to be weaker when I hold it, when I hold my arm up at 90 degrees. So like if I get a resistance band or cables, I can do way more weight on my, on my right than I can on my left. And, um, 
Yeah, since the I've, I've been kind of figuring out since the rotator cuff does like a bad job of stabilizing the shoulder while I'm pressing, my left trap will kind of take over and compensate while I'm like doing pressing movements. And after I discovered this, I kind of tried to add like like resistance band, like external rotation, so I can kind of strengthen it. But that doesn't seem to be doing much. And even like still on my pushing workouts, like at the end, my left trap will get like tense and pumped up. So even though I'm not doing like shrugs or anything during that workout. Um, and yeah, as of writing this, it's been four weeks of doing that with not much improvement. And the external rotations have gone a little bit stronger, but but not not much. It doesn't seem to be making any like improvements on my lifting or anything. So yeah, I hope that's enough detail. But if if not, just Cody, let me know. four weeks. Cody, you said you're 17. Pretty good diagnosis. Yeah, there. I know. Oh, yeah, you're smart. Say, are yeah, you studying? Yeah, it's pretty good. Are you for studying you to... uh, exercise exercise science or anything? Yeah, no, I'm still in high school. But um, you guys did a, a like a Q and A while ago, and like you recommended books or whatever. Yeah, you guys recommended starting strength and um, Double mm-hmm. Leopard, and I've I've been reading. I finished starting strength. I'm um, good for reading you, Supple Leopard. Good those, yeah, those yeah, yeah. And yeah also just listening to point. podcasts. No, yeah. you're doing great, yeah. bro. Yeah, you're good, doing great. Good troubleshooting. Yeah. That's good did you play? Uh, you play baseball a lot when you were a kid? No, I'm. I surf and I lift. Okay. I've been doing that for the past three, okay. four years. And, and when I was younger, I just played like every sport ever, basically. All right, all right. <laughs> you're right-handed. Yeah, right-handed. Yeah. So it's it's what you're saying is not uncommon, especially if you play, you throw a lot, you play sports. There's gonna be discrepancies. There's gonna be, but I'm gonna okay. What number one? You're overthinking it. I'm looking at your <laughs> pictures. I can't even. I can barely tell. Um, but number two, um, I think it's a great idea to do unilateral training. Mm-hmm. I think a program like Map Symmetry would be phenomenal for you. And then after that, just get strong with perfect form. It takes it takes a while longer buddy. than four months. Yeah, yeah. yeah for visual changes to, to happen. Although I will say this, I'm looking at your pictures. I think you're being a little too yeah. granular with the imbalances that you see. Um, okay. But nonetheless, I'll be honest with you, Cody, at your age, if you just did traditional strength training with good form, it would probably balance out anyway. Mm-hmm. But I think map symmetry would be the best bet. I mean, I think you're doing a great job, bro. I yeah. think yeah. You, I think the the way you you troubleshooted this and the things that you were starting to do, I just think it takes time. Mm-hmm. You can, you're going to send you, we'll send you map symmetry if you don't have that. Follow that. I have that. Oh, you have it already? Yeah, yeah. And then I, I'm assuming because you listen to the podcast so well and you're reading the books, uh, you do you follow our advice where we talk about starting with your weaker side first and then mirror yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Of I, course. But the thing is that when I do like unilateral training, even if I do one side at a time, like say, for example, I'm doing rows, like I still feel like, like my trap will take most of the work. So go light, like, en- go than- light enough. So that's mm-hmm. this might be the challenge here too, is that you're you're picking a weight that you can perform, but you can't get in that strict form. Pick an even lighter weight until you don't feel yeah. that over, that. Yeah, that's right. Until you don't you're feel that. To jump it up to your performance on the other side. What, what's happening is that that it's it's elevating, right? That that tra- it traps coming up a little bit. That shoulders rolling forward. And so you just you need to pick a weight that's so light that you can keep it retracted, depressed in that position, and stay with that stay with that weight until you slowly strengthen from there. Yep. Don't choose a weight just because you can, just because it feels easy because your muscles can do it. If you can't perform it with perfection and like perfect form, keeping the shoulder down, then lighten the load until you can. Until, and, and, that's and how you decide how much weight you Oppose the motion that you're feeling. So the, the motion right. you're feeling is a shrug. So when you're doing a row, depress, mm-hmm. depress and row. Oppose it, go in the opposite direction yeah, so that it. doesn't activate so much. If you go too heavy, you'll go back into your old recruitment But pattern. I will tell you this. I think you are ahead of where I was at your age as far as understanding this. I had it similar in my pec, and it was similar because my shoulder was rolling forward and up. And uh, over time, I kind of pieced it together. I think you being aware of it already and being mindful and like trying to yeah. address it is already, to Sal's point, yeah. like you're, you're, you're going to balance out. You're going you're gonna to yeah. balance out. Uh, you're doing a lot but of the right things. You're just scratching the surface with what you're doing too. I mean, you, you, just doing continuous like external rotation and like taking moments out of your day to press yourself against the wall to you know take a rubber band and work on those those drills. Like 
frequency is everything yeah. when you're trying to correct uh, some kind of dysfunction. And so, and it's going to happen, you know, over a gradual amount of time. So you, you take those things you've identified, you bring them in as a primer before you work out every single time and it's going to solve yeah. itself. I've never, I've never in my life trained a, a teenager who's been working out, who didn't have a big right to left imbalance. It's yeah. just, it, you come out with one because you're right-handed, then you go work out. Maybe the first couple of years you weren't doing it right. So it tended to, you know, maintain the issue. But the good news is, I mean, I'm going to be quite honest with you, Cody. You're, you're I think Map Symmetry is a great program. Follow it. Even if you didn't follow Map Symmetry, even if you stuck to barbell lifting and you just perfected your technique and got strong over time, it would probably self-correct just because of your age, just because of how fast your body adapts. I mean, Adam balanced out his pec yeah. by benching better with the barbell. Yeah. He didn't do you know yeah. unilateral training. Exactly. Um, and so again, at your age, it's going to happen. So you just just be patient. Yep. You're so, I mean, just from talking to you, you're like light years ahead of, of most kids. The biggest imbalances I ever saw with kids your age uh, were people who've been pitching uh, for, you know, since they were children. Then there were some real big imbalances where I, it actually twisted their spine uh, to an extent. But you're, you're oh, wow. yeah, you're totally fine. You're totally fine. You know, it, it's going to catch up, bro. And then do you have, what programs okay. of ours do you he's have? Got, he's got symmetry. Well, I know he's got that, but what else? I have, have? I have anabolic performance. Aesthetic, symmetry, and power lift. Which ones have you followed? Have you followed all of them? You don't have strong yet. Huh? I've I've done I've done anabolic and aesthetic. Okay. How about, how about old timey? Yeah, I would like you to do. I like old timey strong. Well, I think performance would be the best follow up for his age. Well, he's got that. Yeah, exactly. So go symmetry, performance, and then I want to give you a program. Is there any of our give programs? Him, give him old time. Yeah. Would you want to follow old times? Uh, old time strength. Sure, that would be cool. All right, we'll throw oh, that yeah. to you. I think like the windmill and stuff, and that's going to be sure. really, really good for him. So yeah, it'll, yeah, it'll add load to a lot of the stuff you're yeah, working yeah, on mobility sure. wise. Yeah, yeah. But he's doing the right thing, and yeah. in, in symmetry, at the end of symmetry, he's got the five by that's five right. training in there. So it's how's good. how's your diet? It's it's great. It's really good. Yeah, you eat you, you like actually. Have, you so you like you plan out your meals. You're eating enough protein, all that stuff. Yeah. How's your sleep? Really good. So, yeah? Like eight to nine hours usually. Yeah. Bro, you're on fire. No, dude. I yeah. can't wait to see what happens to this kid this in like five yeah. years. <laughs> good job. Is this All is right. this the career Hopefully. path you want to go? Or you want to be yeah, a, tra be a trainer? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I did the free trainer course um, when you guys had it like a couple months ago. No way. And awesome. I, I, asked, I asked the question like if I should get a degree in it or like in a field like that or not. Uh, and oh, yeah. so That's you guys, good. I remember Sal answered that question. I've been thinking about that. Yeah. Well, don't, for a while. like, don't tell your parents. To I told you not to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Hey, I tell you, <laughs> Hey, I tell you what though, uh, and you're a good example of this. I mean, look what you're learning on your own already. You, that you wouldn't even get to that year three in your uh, yeah. in your, no, your kinesi the curve, kinesiology dude. would have just barely got there. Year three would have been teaching you what you figured out on your own by reading books. Totally. You wow. get you get good grades. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I've got pretty solid grades. You're gonna do fine, Cody. Yeah, you're you're doing good, buddy. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, keep it up, cool. man. Keep us posted. Maybe you have maybe there'll be a job opportunity down the road. There you go. Hopefully, yeah. that would be super sick. I'd yeah, be stoked yeah. to do that. Just don't just don't make fun of Justin too much. He starts yeah, to get where, I, I'm sensitive. <laughs> where in, uh, no, I was just teasing. What part What part of California are you in? Where you at? Uh, Malibu. Oh, uh, nice. Okay. Oh, rough. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's real, real well, good, man. All right, buddy. Yeah, you're right. doing good. Thanks. Take it easy. Appreciate your time, guys. You got All right, it. All right, dude. Have a good one. He's going to do good. Smart kid. He's got a great uh, attitude. I mean, as he was breaking it all down, I'm like, this kid knows what he's doing. Yeah. 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 My yeah. abduction. Nailing it. Yeah, yeah. Agrees. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, rotator cuffs, contributing. I yeah. love when we have young guys. You know, so do I, dude. Yeah, yeah I love I love it. Been, he's gonna do great. Yeah, he's gonna do really good. You know, it's funny. It's like I, some, you know, it's I, I realize this now, but early days, people would see me on the street, listen to the show, and then they would throw a jab at me, and I'd be like, "Who the fuck?" You know? Uh, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, "Wait a minute!" They listen to, to, to of our course. show. They, they feel then like you know, it's it so took funny. Me a second. I'm hey, like, I was I hadn't said it in a little while. I was gonna say that when he said that, I was gonna say, "Oh, oh don't Justin's worry, Justin is because I always yeah. do that to yeah, Justin, right?" I was like, "Oh, this kid already beat me to it." Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, he, he knows the drill. Yeah, yeah. So. No, he's going to do good, and um, I think he's overthinking it. But at that age, I've trained a lot of kids. I've never trained 
a teenager than have a, you take a, any you take a sixteen year old have them do something with one side or the other. It is. Are you a, kidding me? Yeah. And they balance it out, which is could even barbell. Honestly, they don't even need to go crazy. With honestly, a, a, a kid that age uh, just being aware of it is already yeah. mm -hmm. like an mm -hmm. almost enough right there. Yep. Just like you said, practicing form and the fact that he's already doing things to try and correct it. Like it, before know. he knows it, it'll be balanced out. Awesome. All right, I know you like that episode. If you did, check this one out.